Hey everybody, Game Hounds Podcast. How are you? Oh, not that. Uh, and there we go. Hi, hi. Sorry we are late, but we're always late. What else is new? It's a thing. It's our thing. Mm -hmm. We're late every week. And I want to apologize right now for the sound quality last week because Nick and nobody else, I am appalled at not just Nick, but all of you, all of you, I blame all of you that you didn't tell me that my microphone was set to my webcam and not my microphone. And if you can't hear the difference, I have to wonder about you. That you wouldn't tell me. I didn't realize that until today when I actually went to look on YouTube to figure out what number of podcasts we were on and realized that I did the entire show sounding awful. And you know me. This matters to me. How things sound matters to me so much that I don't trust you all now. I do not trust you a bit. And I'm going to check to make sure that I'm not sounding like ass. You sound fine. You, fuck off. You don't even know. You wouldn't know if bad sound bit you on the ass right now. Sounds, I fine. Have, sounds fine to me. You have zero, zero confidence in my book. I don't know what the big Absolutely deal is. not. All right. I'm checking to make sure. Okay, there we go. We're we're good. We have now I have I have verifiably confirmed that this is the microphone we're using right now. AC Wraith, are you here? I'm gonna here you are. Sir, you have let me down. Like Nick, I expect to let me down. You, 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 I expect you to tell me. When my microphone sounds like ass. You're a musician. You know better. I'm, I'm, yes, I am. Very, but does he, does he really me. know better? He does. He's a musician. He's got ears. You're an idiot. I have you ears. Don't, you don't have, no, you're an idiot. You don't have ears. You know, you're an idiot. I mean, I love you, Nick, but you're an idiot when it comes to sound. You don't even notice the difference. You went, you listened to me for two and a half hours last week and didn't even notice the difference. Only mm -hmm. when I said, this is what I sound like coming out of a mic. And this is what I sound like not coming out of the mic. You, yeah. Then I heard the hear difference. the difference. You could hear the difference, but you didn't notice the difference. I at can least, always, at I least can not, hear, not, not I can that hear dead. everything when it's compared to something. It's oh, actually yeah, being course. able to hear it independently on its own. Oh yeah. No, absolutely not. Yeah. Yo, you're an idiot. No, you are. You are an oral idiot. I feel like I'm at the I didn't level say, of most people. AC Ray, I didn't say you had to be a good musician, but you <laughs> at least know the sound of whether something sounds good or bad. You should know this. I bought you very expensive speakers because I figured you knew the difference. <laughs> He's going to want you, those speakers I bought back you very now. expensive speakers because she I wants them back. So because you're so good at your job. You've, you've avoided the speaker responsibility. You've lost the privilege of speakers. I try. I want my speaker you, back. No, you I now not. have to, you have to play out of like $30 computer speakers. <laughs> I'm going to go down to like, you know, like O'Reilly Auto Parts and get you a <laughs> pair of speakers. Oh, my God. I'm so angry. Anyway, how are you? How was your week? I'm I'm uh, looking unkempt and not cared for because I am unkempt and not cared for. It's been a hell of a week. I, I, uh, I where we are, you know, it's all week. It was gorgeous. And then this weekend in my little hamlet of a town, we had something called Spring Fling, which is kind of like our Easter celebration where there's, you know, like uh, the egg races and something called a cakewalk, which I'd never seen. I mean, it's been going on for years, but I've never been down there. But I guess that's an East Coast thing is the cakewalk. What is it? It's like musical chairs. It's you put out cones or spaces in a circle and then people stand on, you know, in front of one of those, like you have 20, 20 cones with the numbers one through 20. Everybody stands in front of a cone. Each person stands for a cone. And then you walk, the music starts and you walk in a circle, right? Mm -hmm. And it keeps, you keep walking until the music stops. And as soon as the music stops, you park yourself in front of the most, the, the closest cone to you. And then a number is drawn. Uh, one to 20 and then whichever whosever number is drawn they win a cake it's called a cakewalk 
Hmm. So we had a cakewalk and gave out six cakes and everybody absolutely loved it. I've never seen it before. It was so much fun, but okay. I was helping with it. I was assisting with it. Um, it's, it looks like I'm going to be, it looks like I'm going to become vice president of my neighborhood organization. Oh, yeah. The power you can wield. Yeah, no, no, no. But I am going to be like involved in these kind of weekend things and this is, doing these this, neighborhood events. I know why you're doing this. This is all just part of your big conspiratorial plot to not have to fix the thing that will not be mentioned. You know what? Hold on a second. I have to respond. Yeah, I have to just, respond to you're this. You're going to use your Shots. political power. I know. No, no. I got to respond to someone's gonna like, Someone's going to file like a uh, uh, complaint about the, the thing. And you're going to be like, oops, it fell off into the trash. Put a pin on that conversation. I have to respond to the shots fired that was at me. By our own community <laughs> manager, AC Wraith. He's he's got a solid point. He does not. This has nothing to do with it. That is a straw man argument right there. It is absolutely it's a non sequitur. Why 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 would I even dare to distribute an audio podcast that doesn't sound good? You'd be surprised how many of them there are. Exactly. And that's, I never wanted to be that. That was, that I never, I always cared about how it sounds. That's why I labor over them hmm. when you guys are like, oh, just put it up and don't edit it. I can't do that. I care about editing and I care about sound. There's very few things in this world. I don't care that I'm wearing, I'm not wearing makeup. I really don't care what I'm wearing. I don't care what's in my background. I care about whether we sound good. That's my thing. So, and wouldn't wouldn't that matter most importantly to an audio version? What you're saying is all the video related stuff doesn't matter, but the audio related stuff does. Therefore, the audio podcast should be the priority. Video, video stuff does matter, but for me as a sound wonk, the sound matters. So, and 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 I can't listen to my own show because. The new system. See that? Remember the old broken system? And I said I got it replaced with that one box that fixes everything. Mm -hmm. This is the one downside of that 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 box. My old system before it broke, when it was like incredibly complicated. One of the things that made it complicated is what I heard in my headset was live, so okay. I could hear when my microphone wasn't set to the right microphone mm. what it was it i could hear what what i was hearing of nick and and myself what i was hearing was what was coming out of the system and into youtube so i could monitor myself of what i sound like to make sh and i would never be on the wrong headset i would know immediately as soon as i put it on I'm like oh that's wrong how many times do i have to do that like oh, i gotta reset now i'm only hearing what's coming out of the mic directly and and now so if we it's have a way wrong audio setting issues. so if it's a wrong setting on the the website or you know wrong setting to go to youtube and it's come the actual what's coming out of youtube is coming out of this camera here i don't hear it that's why i need to rely upon you to notice these things don't do that that's your first problem you my how many times did you tell me just buy a new one why do we have to worry about this complicated system that you've got you can't have it both ways either it's complex and thorough or it's quick and easy but it isn't thorough it isn't complete I've got, I had to let go of a little bit of control over what everything sounds like. Trusting. And I think I even, I think, I believe I even mentioned it to you that it was important for you to notice these things because I now can't hear them. I don't think so. I know I said that to you because that was a big, that was a 
big decision. That was a very, very intentional decision that I had to make of if I was going to do this quick and easy and make it happen, or if I was going to have to buy a whole new soundboard and reroute things and go through, you know, so... Uh, Soundflower and 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 making sure that insies and outsies were going in different places, and I was getting monitors from other other so sources. And one part of the conversation was you from the computer, and the other part of this uh, of it was me coming out of the after uh, you know post um what was inter getting it out of that that spot from between where it left my boxes and went to um uh, uh went to youtube it's essentially where you want to pull that sound from where you want to monitor that sound from and it had to be from two different places because you have to be coming out of my computer i had to be coming before it hit the computer otherwise we would be out of sync it was it was incredibly complex and that was why it kept breaking. And you were the one that said, why do you care? Just make it easy. Mm -hmm. So I made that intentional decision of, I can trust Nick. And that was my first mistake. Mm -hmm. I sure. If you want to put it that way. I, I, I and I remember having that conversation with you. I remember saying something about that. But the you. point, the larger point is that all of that complication, like it was overly complicated. <laughs> Different mic tone in one episode, a problem. Stream v viewers have never heard the muted news intro. What? Stream viewers having never heard the muted news intro. The muted news intro? What? Are you talking about this thing? Hold on a second. I have to go to brand. Sorry. Going to the news intro. Sorry. I'm going in here in this one. This podcast discusses. No, not this one. This one. Is that what you were talking about? How is that ever muted? I'm confused. Anyway. So uh, what were we talking about? Yes. my my. I, it is absolutely not a power play for me. Um, I, I kind of sort of don't want to do it. It is, it's, it's like too much pressure. I feel like I'm, I'm, what was it? Tweak? Too much pressure. Ah, I then, then don't, don't do it. Kind of, I mean, I don't, it's kind of like getting up in the morning and helping with a spring fling. Was it something I would choose to do <laughs> on a Sunday, Saturday morning in the rain? By the way, it was raining, pouring mm. rain. So the news and it, intro is never audible. You get muted. The music mutes your voice. Oh, okay. Good to know. Well, that, sir. Say Why didn't you let me know this before? Another case. Why are you not letting me know these things? Because I thought that you had something on your end no uh, what you hear is what's coming out okay now can you hear me now like yes. what it was before yeah because it was a matter of levels okay that makes sense yeah it's called ducking and i was being ducked behind the 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 the, the news intro or the, the you know the news bump the bumper <sighs> ac right you solved the problem so, okay, it was raining. Solve the problem. Oh my god, you got mm. idiots! I'm surrounded by idiots. Okay, I feel like we need to we need to move off the audio because you could spend the entire show talking. Figure it with audio. you're the ones that told me not to fix shit in post. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> All right, I we definitely need to move off. And as you can see, my face is getting red because I'm actually getting. I am getting angry now. Okay, okay, okay.
<laughs> you were doing the thing. You might become vice president. You had a lot. I feel like I'm. I was the standing only on one. the rain all day. I was. I was it's been a hell of a weekend because I was. Uh, this. Th I woke up at eight o'clock, uh, eight thirty in the morning, and it was pouring rain. And we had vendors showing up, and we were vendors were setting up in the rain. And the whole time we were looking, and we could see the blue sky coming. And it's like the event didn't start till eleven, so we were all setting up in pouring fucking rain, and it's like. It's going to it's going to be it's going to be good. It's going to be good. And sure enough, you know, it turns out that it was good, but it meant that we were I was soaked to the skin for most of the day. And then I came home and just collapsed and just slept because it had just been so much. <laughs> you see, Ray and I are having a fight. <laughs> I hate it. When there's, a, there's, a, fight. there's a timeline. Issue here. <laughs> yeah. Um. Anyway, so. So yeah, so you've had a lot to do. Yeah. The reason that I am doing this in the living room is because Rachel has to work this weekend. And so she's using the office as an actual office. Um, so it feels like everyone else was working a lot this week except me. I yeah. I was just playing Dragon's Dogma the past weekend. Yeah, we were supposed to actually be playing a, a game together. We're supposed to be playing um but you did twice. You you canceled on us. Okay, here's okay. Wait, where where did these refrigerators go? <laughs> I I got a text that you're like, yeah, I'm moving refrigerators, and then you sent me a picture of refrigerators, but you never answered where they were. Okay, so here's the story of the refrigerators. Like, did I. You did you physically move them or were you overseeing? Oh, no, them? I was physically moving them. I physically moved them from San Francisco to Concord. Okay. So here's what happened with the refrigerator. I think hopefully I can pull up. Maybe I can pull up the, the, the picture so that you can see. Let me see. Where is your, where is my news from Nick? There we go. All right. So, yeah. Um, come on. There we go. Now, let me go to you. I want to present, share screen, uh, tab. Come on. Where's the picture of the refrigerators? Um... Why is it not picking up the pictures of the refrigerators? Like you could share my calendar. Chrome tab, no. Tire screen, no. Window, no. Okay. Um, no, I don't want to do that. Okay. I guess I can't share the photo. I don't know why I can't share the photo. Um, but, oh, I know why. I can open it in preview. There we go. All right. Stand by. Sorry this is taking so long. So here's the story of the uh, story of the refrigerators. These refrigerators right here. Okay. So, you know, I work for a company in San Francisco and we are in the process of expanding considerably. We're, we our Sacramento office is, is going to be getting a new floor and our, we just opened an Oakland office that needs furniture and other stuff. And, and I'm, I don't like buying things new, especially when I can buy them used. So I went to, I frequently cruise a, a company that is a, a distribution company, which means that, um, or disposition company. This, this is essentially a company that does auctions of either surplus equipment for businesses, or if a business goes bankrupt or is shutting down or downsizing that they come in and they sell everything in the, in the, in the office, in the whole company, you know, that's left. So this was a very high end, uh, gourmet food delivery service in San Francisco. The company's still around, but I guess they had a massive downsizing and got rid of one of their distribution centers in San Francisco. So there was a table that we could use in our office. And then there was that espresso machine that I told you about, right? That yeah. amazing espresso machine that I had never even heard of. Looked it up. They're like a $2,000 super automatic espresso machine. And when I went down to Nick's, um, Nick and Rachel's engagement party down in, in you know, south of me in Central Valley. Uh, actually, it was near Santa Barbara. 
um, there we stayed at a house that actually had one of these and it was amazing and i'm like i fucking want this machine i am absolutely going to bid on this machine so i all i wanted was a table and espresso machine and the auction comes up <laughs> one so of the how you get eight refrigerators one of the things well another thing that was in it is there were these uh, stand up drink refrigerators like soda refrigerators that were like they're like $1,500 a piece and there were two of them in the lot. And I'm like, we could use those in the new office, you know, it saves us from having to buy one new. It's If I can get it cheaper than what I would buy something new, I'll get that too. So I'm figuring, all right, three things, tops, three things, tops. Well, while I'm watching the auction, one of the things in the auction were these deep freezers and they're essentially convertible deep freezers, refrigerators in that it is, it looks like a refrigerator. But it can go to 43 degrees, which is refrigerator temperature. But it can also go down to minus 11 degrees, which means you could take make make it. You can use it either as a refrigerator or as a deep freezer. And I'm like, fuck, those are really nice. They're all stainless steel, brand new, very expensive. They run about a thousand dollars a piece, and they had dozens of them. And I'm like, I don't need one. So I'm watching the auction, and the refrigerators start going cheap, like 150 bucks each. I'm like, shit, that's a really good deal. So I call my brother. And I say, Ian, I, do you want one of these? These are really nice refrigerators. I mean, really nice deep freezers. And they're not like the box, the, you know, the box deep freezers. They're actually stand-up deep freezers. So they take way less space. And you can actually access these stuff. You don't have to dig into your deep freezer to get something. And he's like, yeah, I could use one of those. I'm like, okay. And I, I don't know if I want one, but eh, I'll bid on one and see if I get it. And if I get it, I get it. If I don't get it, it's not a heartbreak break. So here's the thing is that there's all these refrigerators and what you do when there's multiples of something and you want one or two, you bid on like three or four. Okay, cheapest, yeah. lowest Wait. price you can, because you're going to get outbid and you're going to get one of them. Because they're all like, they're all coming up. They're all closing like within 30 seconds of each other or a minute of each other. So you, you just kind of put your bid in on the lowest price that you, the highest price you want to spend. And then, you know, like something crazy, stupid low, knowing that you're going to get outbid on most of them. And if you don't, you get a really good deal. So I put bids down on three. And then one of them got outbid. So I'm like, ah, oh, no, two of them got outbid. So I'm like, ah, I put them down on two more and then another one. So I had bids out on four of these refrigerators, four or five, five of these, one, two, three, five, five of these refrigerators, four of them used and one of them new in box. And I'm waiting for someone to outbid me because I, I put such a low bid down. I'm waiting for somebody to outbid me. And then I go to the bathroom. And I come back and they're all gone. I'm like, oh, okay, good. Somebody outbid me. And then I look, it's like, here's the bids you won. Refrigerator, 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 refrigerator. It's like, shit. I bought five of them. Jeez. So I only wanted one, maybe two, and I ended up with five. So then we go to this place to pick them up. We have to pick them up on a pickup day. We're one of the first people there uh, you know, for, a, we have like a, my, my brother's moving truck. We've essentially got the equivalent. And I also got the two stand-ups and it's, I'll show you again. I got the, uh, the five refrigerators, which is the box. And then those four refrigerators. And then we've got the two drink things, which I got for $150 each. I mean, $150 for both of them. So $75 each. So I got everything kind of I wanted. But all of a sudden now I've got to transport them from San Francisco and put them somewhere to store so I can sell some of these because I do not want five refrigerators. I'm One of them is going to Ian. The rest of them I'm just going to sell because I don't want them. So we're one of the first people to get there to bid or to pick up. And I noticed that there are three refrigerators that are plugged in. Everything else unplugged all piled in the back and they're just stacked in back so my brother and i are like moving refrigerators trying to dig through this pile to find the best ones that we want and i see these three up front that are pristine and still plugged in so i'm like if they're plugged in then i don't have to clean them it means that they're not like 
moldy or whatever inside. I don't actually have to deep steam clean them before I sell them. So I'm like, hey, can how about are these refrigerators okay to take? And they're like, yeah, yes, you can take those. They haven't got numbers on it. That's fine. You can take those three. So I'm like, all right, Ian, we'll take these three. So then Ian and I unplug them and we get them all on the dolly. And I'm like, you know, and I just happen to like open it up to look inside. They're full of frozen turkeys. <laughs> all three of them are full of fro of of uh vacuum sealed deep frozen turkeys heritage mary's heritage brand turkeys which run about 70 or 80 dollars a piece they're very expensive they're heritage breed they're not like your regular turkey you get at the store you have to actually special order mary's turkeys so i looked i'm like well what do we do about the turkeys and they're like well do you want them i'm like yeah sure Ian's like, absolutely, we want them. <laughs> so now I've got three, five, five refrigerators, three of which were, have 15 Mary's turkeys in them, deep frozen, that I have to get rid of before I get rid of the refrigerators. So this one and a half hour pickup turned into be a four and a half hour pickup. I didn't get home until 930 that night. And I left, you know, I we arrived to pick up at, at 1230. We arrived to pick up at 1230 in the afternoon. We didn't get, I mean, that was where we arrived to get to the, the place to unload. But I didn't get home until 930 that night and I was filthy and exhausted. So that was why, that was what happened with the refrigerators. The so night before was just to... somebody seagulled me at five o'clock in the afternoon. I didn't get home until eight o'clock at night. Or well, nine what, are you, night. what are you going to do with all the turkeys? Give them away and sell them? They've they've been there since uh, Thanksgiving. I I talked to the guy, and and he was like, we uh, we over ordered for thir turkeys for Thanksgiving. So these are, but they're all been vacuum packed, and they've all been deep frozen since Thanksgiving. So they're all perfectly fine. They just need to be defrosted. They don't even have any like freezer burn on them because they're deep frozen. Um. So, and they're also vacuum sealed. So there was absolutely no, you know, they're all absolutely fine. So I'm probably going to give some away. Um, we're storing them at our, the, the, the strip mall that we own a unit in, or we have, we have, we own the strip mall. My family owns the strip mall. So I've got it in one of the bays there. I'm probably just going to go hand them out to like, or sell them to some, some of the guys that work in the thing. Like, Hey, 20 bucks. You want a turkey? That feels like that's I'm selling meat. <laughs> Out of the back of a, out of a, out of a, uh, uh, out of a, a garage, you know, yeah, yes, in a, you, that, you in are. An automotive store in, uh, in Concord. Yeah, I know. It's all kind of, this is, this is how this shit happens. You're just, you're just like opening the back of a truck. Hey, hey kid. Hey kid, you, you want, want you want some turkey? Look, I got, I got. Who wants a turkey? A whole, <laughs> whole turkey. Do you want an eight pounds? Do you want a 16 pounds? Do you want a 22 pounds? I got them all, baby. What size do you want? But what like, size that's you want just, a heritage or you want a free range? That's just I got a you mountain of other things to do, right? Like you're already busy. <laughs> this is just more stuff to do. I know. And it all started with, hey, you know, these refrigerators are going really cheap. Do you want one? And it just turned into a fucking odyssey. So now I have to get rid of the turkeys before I can sell the refrigerators. Oh, God. Uh, this is, this is, you realize yes, that this yes, is the, they do. this is the plot of a sitcom. This is the plot of a sitcom. Right? This is something that would happen in Friends. Oh, shit. I accidentally bought five refrigerators. And guess what? Three of them are full of turkeys. And I got yes, this is this is the, the I turkey. Love Lucy episode with the with the the can making the candy, except the candy's refrigerators and mm -hmm. turkeys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what happened. And they're like, you know, <laughs> some of the woman that was there is like, wow, you got a lot of them. What are you going to do with five refrigerators? I'm like, I have no idea. And she's like, well, why did you get them? I'm like, mistakes were made. <laughs> Things happened. All I wanted was a table and an espresso machine. I didn't even want one How did refrigerator. That happen? I and don't then... know. Okay, wait. I saw pictures of the fridges. I saw yeah. pictures of the espresso machine. 
Did you get a table? I did get the table. Okay. I got okay. the table. I got everything. Everything I ever. <laughs> Everything I bid on, I got. Too much to my distress. Everything I got, I bid on, I got. <laughs> I got the table for a hundred bucks. I got this espresso machine. I spent more money on that espresso machine than I did on, and I'll show you what I got. That on all of that, all of that was less expensive than the espresso machine. Okay, you want about want, the same price, about the same price as the espresso machine. You want to get rid of a fridge, put it out on the street with a sign that says fifty bucks. Oh, someone will, someone, someone will steal it instantly. Oh yeah, no, I could absolutely put it out on the street and it would disappear. But um, I need to make some of that money back. Uh, mm. I think that uh, the the I got the the one at new in box for two hundred, and the rest of them I got for like a hundred and eighty. So if I can sell them all for three hundred, four hundred bucks, I'll be happy. Okay, I was gonna say like, how many fridges do you have to sell to make up the cost of all the fridges? Oh, um, let's see. I'm probably gonna sell that one here. Let me figure out uh, how much it would be. So like I'm if probably you sell gonna one sell fridge, that you break one even. That you have to sell one, it. and I Two spend break that even. one and uh, uh, three. If I sell all the all four of the refri just the refrigerators for what mm -hmm. I want for them, I will pay for absolutely everything that I've already gotten. Okay, that's pretty including, good. Including these things, including the table, including the espresso machine, including the um, Turkish coffee, the three Turkish coffee makers, including <laughs> wait, including the popcorn machine. <laughs> wait, wait, there's a popcorn machine in here too? There's a popcorn machine. There's three uh, Turkish coffee makers. Wait, why? <laughs> I bid 25 bucks on three, not, to, not, not eat one each. All three, 25 bucks on all three Turkish coffee makers. I thought it was they're just like 80, they're like a hundred dollars each. And I, I paid 25 bucks for the whole thing because I'm we, like, yeah, throw, I'll throw 35 bucks down. Do we need a stage like an auction intervention? No, 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 no. This was this, this was this is what a one and done. I'm not doing that again. And yes, they do add to the the storage cost of the because I do have to have them plugged in and keep them plugged in, but they're oh, not because you have the turkeys. If you didn't have I, the turkeys, you did, you wouldn't have to plug them in. Exactly, exactly. That's a, a complicated matters to no end. Okay, then we had we couldn't just stick them in the warehouse. We had to stick them in the warehouse that has the electricity. You need to get all the turkeys. Just like go to Safeway and stand outside with like a shopping cart full of turkeys and just be like, here, you have one. You have one. No, I'm not going to give away the turkeys. I'm going like, to sell hey, the turkeys 10, because I'm, I, I'm not going to throw away this. The point is not to get rid of them. The point is to make money, is to get my money back. Then just stand outside of Safeway and be like, hey, 20 bucks for a turkey. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just, just going to go around to all the guys. As you can see, like, what, back, what did it come over from? Over here, there's like a warehouse. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but like, oh, hold on a second. You can see, like, there's warehouse bays over here. I'm just going to go to the guys that work over there and go, hey, anybody want a turkey for 20 bucks? Hmm. 20 bucks for a 20-pound turkey? Like, where like, does turkey expensive? come from? Uh, it came in a fridge. From a fridge. I bought, from? I bought a fridge, and it was full of turkeys. And do you want one or not? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I suppose the fridge could have been filled with worse things. Nick, do you want a turkey? You know, remember what you said about how things that you could cook... That I could challenge you to, I could, I could walk you through cooking. Ever want to like make a turkey? Maybe. I could walk you through making a turkey. Uh, ta table that on your new table. <laughs> no, that's that's for work. That's for work. I have to clean it too. So that's what I would be doing now. But I'm doing a podcast. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's why that was the second day. The first day it was just people came by and like I said, I, I think I made an explanation of, I, I got seagulled at 445 as I'm preparing to leave. Somebody comes in and like, Hey, here's a new contract. Can you sort it out for me and get it sent out? And they hand it to me and it's just a shit show and I have to sort it out because the client's sitting there waiting to sign it. Mm. So I got, had to take care of that. And then it just became kind of like a nightmare where somebody else like, are you going to clean up the, the back room over there? I'm like, 
in for a penny, in for a pound. Yeah, at that point, I'm like, you know what? I'll just stay until 8 o'clock, and I'll just clean everything up. Just throw everything out and clean it up, just so I don't have to deal with their bullshit anymore. So, yeah, yeah, that was, it was just a bad week. Just all around bad week. So I'm sorry, but tonight, if you can, you do it tonight, or are you gonna be? I don't know. I don't know. No answers. No, no nothing more than to... I don't know. I. Oh. <laughs> do you? How about this? Do you want to do it? What was it? Tuesday night. Tuesday, you don't work. You go. Don't go to the office. We can like no re-table. Monday. Monday or Monday or Friday. You don't go to the office Monday or Friday. Correct. Tomorrow night. Okay. Tomorrow night. We'll we'll go we'll essentially do the same plan. Is that you and I will Peloton and then have dinner and then play. Although we'll play Hell Divers. Yes. Wanna play Hell Divers? Yes, I would rather play Baldur's Gate, but understandably we'll let you do hell divers we'll, we'll do hell divers okay yeah that's I'm, my concession to missing last week i could i could accept that still haven't had those cinnamon rolls since the restaurant closed decades ago oh that's right nick was going to make bacon those cinnamon rolls and i can now deep freeze them and send them to you <laughs> do you want you want a deep freezer with it <laughs> If you don't work tomorrow, then why are you not doing it tonight so you can sleep in the next day? Oh, he does work. He just doesn't work. He works from home. He doesn't yeah. have to commute. Also, I would do it tonight so we could sleep in the next day. But somebody has to get up early for a regular nine to five job. Yeah. And tomorrow <laughs> is our 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 uh or next like all staff meeting which i is like the whole company it's the formal staff meeting yes every almost every monday i have a staff meeting the question is is it a formal staff meeting or an informal staff meeting and the second and fourth monday is the formal staff meeting so this is going to be the formal one and i have and i run the meeting i can't not be there i run the meeting it is me i'm Thank you for coming, everybody. Let's start with the agenda. I have one has to put out the agenda and correct the agenda and you know print it out for everyone and get it out. I mean, that's my job. So yeah, our schedules are in general pretty different. Uh like if yeah. you ever want to play something at 10 p.m., hit me up because that's when I'd usually start. I could usually go until 11 30, 10 to 11 30. So if I generally speaking, if you text me at 10 p.m., I'll probably play with you. Hmm just fyi you just don't text me to let me know because i'm at 10 p.m i'm awake and i'm not going oh, to bed yeah. for at least another hour, hour and a half well i don't know i don't know how long you want to go for i don't have 10 11 30 is my cutoff it's like that's considering for me that's going to bed early generally speaking if i'm going to bed at 12 30 i'm unhappy with myself but i do that on the regular okay so so I, it's not like i have to be in bed at 10 i don't i i i get up at like seven. 15 to go to work so it's not like uh, you know six hours of sleep is usually good for me i shoot for seven yeah okay so um anyway Maybe we'll do something at 10 tonight then 10 tonight okay. sure All right of course that means super late for you ac wraith so if you have to be up in the morning you're kind of fucked because that's what 10 11 12 1 that's 1 a.m yeah well we'll also we'll just we'll just do tomorrow at what 7 30 yeah that was all what we decided 7 30 yeah tomorrow night 7 30 for sure but we'll also play just for us tonight anyway what you play i didn't play anything i was playing <laughs> i was playing refrigerator jenga in the back of a very dusty warehouse that's what i was playing <laughs> this is a long pre-show yeah mm -hmm. hey you want to start the put the music on do the intro music modern culture and technology and these podcasters are big fat potty mouths if you're younger than 18 or are easily offended please stop this podcast now oh and your mom says to take out the trash and do your homework <laughs> Hey, 
Hello and welcome to Game Hounds. Game Hounds episode 709. We are recording this on Sunday, March 24th, 2024. I am E. Sellers. With me is Nikki Nicola. AC Wraith, am I cutting out now? Are you hearing me or is this getting cut out? Just curious. Just saying. Because you guys have not been telling me shit before in the past and now I care. <laughs> um... So anyway, oh, wait a second! <laughs> what the fuck? This is just this is just me taking care of yeah uh power issues. What's your power issues other than that you don't have enough of it? Is that I have all the power in the show? That is your power issue. No, it's a uh... okay. I think that's it. Um, the laptop was running on battery oh really why why would you because i don't usually okay. do this from the couch mm, that's true uh the beginning intro was usually better anyway it was most notable in the news okay all right good to know um all right so what i played was a refrigerator jenga and uh, uh it, it sucked but i got it done yeah. um I hey, do you want do you want some uh, avocado oil? Because they also had a bunch of stuff. They're like, hey, we have to get rid of this stuff, and they had like crates of avocado oil and crates of like decaf coffee. I got a box of avocado oil. Do you want it? Nah. You sure, it's really yeah. expensive stuff. It's like yeah. like the gourmet stuff. Do you want some yeah. Turkish coffee? Want a Turkish coffee maker? Oh hell no. Sure. Yes. Why hell no? Hey, Turkish coffee because amazing. that stuff is strong. It is. Yeah. No, I don't want it that strong. Okay. All right. Shepherd, so anyway, what, uh, what what I, what, you been, have, what you been playing? What you been I've playing? been playing actual video games. All right. Um, more Hell Divers too. Yeah. That game continues to be uh, really really good. Yeah. Uh, more Slay Away Camp. Uh, mm -hmm. and I, what I realized it's not Slay Away Camp two. It's Slay Away Camp Netflix and Kill. Uh, it's like Netflix and Kill. <laughs> yes, it's a specifically published and developed like for Netflix mobile. Because uh, Slayway Camp Two is like an actual other game. Oh, okay. But the notable thing I played this week is Dragon's Dogma Two. Okay, tell me more. Uh, what's What's been really interesting about the first several hours is that. It's not really a sequel. It's more of a remake. And it's so much of a remake that when the title card comes up, it's just Dragon's Dogma. Oh, wow. Really? <laughs> they don't even put a two in there. Um, but it is, it's kind of a lot of the same game, but just with some. Yep, you're some... right. If you go back, let me see if I can go back to it. What? Trying to go to it. Hold on a second. Let me get to it here. All right. Uh, You've got to skip ahead like a couple hours. There we go. See? Like it just says Dragon's Dogma. It doesn't even say Dragon's Dogma 2. Oh, oh, that's the title screen. I'm yeah. also talking about the title card. Uh, when you start a new game and play for several hours. But I, okay. I don't know when it comes up. All right. Um, but yeah, it's a very similar game. With just like a couple quality of life changes, like some graphical upgrades that kind of make it a bit more uh, user friendly. But it's still the the core of the design is still weird enough that it feels like a completely different type of RPG. So the main way it does this and the main thing that sets it apart, in a lot of ways, it feels like. Uh, kind of a harder core Skyrim mm -hmm. because traveling is difficult. Um, the the kind of way that you your health deteriorates over time adds a challenge to it. Um, how this works is you'll you'll get hit right. You get attacked. You get hurt, and uh, your health bar goes down a little bit. Your health bar will go down. Like let's say you get hit and it goes down. 25%. Five of that percent will like be black. And when you get healed, you've lost that 5%. That 5% mm -hmm. doesn't come back. 
So every time you get attacked, you're kind of losing a bit of your maximum health until you like rest, until you make a camp and you rest. And so in that way, the game kind of forces you into this loop of go out and adventure, fight, collect things, go back to town, do whatever. But at a certain point, it's going to get dangerous because you're getting so many fights and you'll get hit because you kind of always get hit. Uh, your maximum health will get so low that it just becomes really, really dangerous to keep going. Mm -hmm. And that's when you should rest. Make a camp and rest, go to an inner rest, and then you get all your health back. Mm -hmm. uh, but camping at an inn is really expensive. And camping out in the wilderness requires you to find a camping spot and requires you to have camping supplies. Mm -hmm. uh, the current situation that I got into right before we started the podcast is I was out adventuring. Uh, oh, I have like seven uh, camping sets, but they're really, really heavy. And so I was like, okay, I'm just going to put all but one of these in storage because I only need one because uh, they're not single use items. You can actually reuse one over and over and over again uh, until like your camp gets ambushed by monsters and then you'll lose it. Uh, so I put them into storage then I go out, do some adventure. After a while, my health gets down to like 50% and night falls and night in this game is pitch black. You know what you're talking about at the ranch? Right. Night? Right. That's night in this game. Okay. Like you have a lantern that illuminates three feet around you and the rest is just black. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, the world is black. I don't know where I'm going. I can follow my mini map because that kind of shows me where I've been. I just need to get to a campfire, get there. I'll be good. Get to a campfire. And I realize I don't have uh, equipment. I don't have the camping supplies because when I put them all into storage and took one out, I didn't actually take one out. So where I left off is myself kind of stuck at 50% health in the middle of the night in a dark forest. My, my teammates are all very well equipped, uh, but it's just like, oh man, how am I going to get out of this? And those are the situations that really make the game shine of you kind of getting yourself into trouble and having to work your way out of it. And there's no quest related to that. That was just me exploring on my own and getting into fun, emergent conflicts on my own and trying to solve it. And that's where the game shines. And what I think it's kind of Skyrim-esque is that a lot of the biggest, most memorable things will be these emergent problems that you run into. Mm -hmm. um, but where it stands apart in the quest design is that it's it's like any other open world RPGs. There's a lot of collectibles around the world, a lot of hidden chests. There's a lot of NPCs that have quests they want to give you, but none of that is indicated on the UI. There are no question marks on the UI. Nothing that separates a quest giver from any other NPC. Oh, wow. Instead, okay. Instead, what happens is if someone has a quest for you, they come to you. Oh. So if you're running around the city, if you get within the vicinity of an NPC with a quest, they will come running up to you and say, hey, I saw you do XYZ. Maybe you can help me out. Hey, uh, I've had troubles with this monster. Can you go take care of it? And so instead of spending all the time looking at a mini map going, okay, there's a question mark over there. I'm going to go see. You kind of just naturally explore the city and the quests come to you in a really cool way. That's kind of neat. Very organic in that way. Yes. Um, and when you're out in the world, you are traveling with a set of AI companions. They're not really a party. You don't really have a party in this game. You have your main character. Then you have your pawns, and your pawns in the lore of the game are like kind of not human. Maybe they're human, maybe not really. 
they're like people from another dimension that have been brought over specifically to do your bidding. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like it's kind of like slavery, except they really enjoy it. <laughs> um, it's like one of those weird. Uh, in the chat, Andrew says they're their own race, except that they're humans and beasts, just like all the other people in the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, like within the fiction, they're this kind of separate people. Pawns are like not entirely human. They're not entirely conscious. They just exist to do your bidding. Right. And so at the start of the game, you create your main pawn who will be like, I'm your buddy. I'm going to be with you the whole game. And then you can choose two other pawns that other characters have made. The pawns are like really smart and you can configure them in different ways. You can configure them to, uh, as you're exploring the world, they will run around you and pick up stuff. Mm -hmm. So, oh, hey, there's like a tree with grapes on it. They will go get that automatically. Uh, There's, you know, a carcass and you can get some meat off of it. They will go pick that up automatically. Uh, If they happen to spot a treasure chest, they will say, hey, master, there's a treasure chest over there. You want me to go get it? Sometimes they'll even just go and open the treasure chest for you. Oh, that's kind of nice. Uh, and if you if you take someone else's pawn, if you summon them, and they have explored this area, and they know where a treasure chest is, they will point you to it. So if someone other someone else's pawn is in your game, and you enter a new area, they will say, "Hey, in another dimension, uh." I found a treasure chest over that way. Do you want me to take you to it? And if you say yes, they will guide you to it. And that's how you do a lot of the quests as well. Some of the quests are like, oh, go talk to Bill. Well, where's Bill? If uh, if you summon a pawn from someone else's game who has completed that quest, that pawn knows where Bill is and will take you to him. Uh, And so in that way... The game has created this system of basically replacing the minimap and all the icons on the minimap with something that feels way more organic to the world itself. And it just makes for like a very compelling experience. That's kind of nice. I'm, 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 man, I, I wish I'd already completed, um, uh, Baldur's Gate, my game of Baldur's <laughs> Gate, because I mean, I'm literally still not finished it um, because I would absolutely be jumping in this. And I remember playing the original Dragon's Dogma and not really getting that far into it because I got so distracted by all the other stuff going on. Mm-hmm. It's so easy to get distracted instead of pursuing, you know, like p- continuing and pouring through the game and actually keeping yourself moving it's so easy to just kind of get into one of these towns and just get lost in that town yeah yeah which i kind of like yeah um and the character creator is really really good it looks like this character if you can pause it when it's looking at their face is timothy chalamet from dune Mm -hmm. (laughs) because they made that uh in my game myself i made uh Danny, uh, Daenerys Targaryen. Targaryen? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it looks like surprisingly like Emily Clark. Really? Like, oh, wow. This is actually really good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there's a whole like people have made Kratos. People have made Walter White. People have made, speaking of Baldur's Gate, people have made Shadowheart and Lysel and Asterion in the c- character creator. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, yeah. Um, I think one of the interesting things too about the game is how the job system works because you can you get a vocation for yourself and it's like fighter, mage, archer, or thief. Mm-hmm. And then you give a vocation to your pawn. And the vo- pawns you summon also have different vocations. And they they play off each other differently. But the way it works is the more you fight in a given vocation, the more you kind of level up that vocation and you can unlock new abilities for it. But at any point, you can switch to a different job. Mm -hmm. And then 
you can kind of take some of the skills from the old job into the new job. And so in that way, I could start as a fighter. Then I could become a mage. Then I could become like kind of a soldier mage. I could do an archer or then be a mage. And then I could become a magic archer. Or I become like an archer fighter or like a thief warrior. You know, you can like mix and match the classes in really, really interesting ways. Right now, I'm still just focused on like one of the basic classes. Um, one of the things I noticed though is that uh, you get a lot of healing items. Like as you're going through, you pick up a lot of grass and a lot of fruit that can be combined into like a health potion. Mm -hmm. And I never drink it because I've got a mage with me <laughs> who's just healing me all the time. <laughs> Nice. But the reason all those health potions are in the game is because what if I didn't have a mage in the party? Right. It's like, well, at some point, I want to change my job. I want to change my pawn's job. And if I make her no longer a mage, all of a sudden, she can't heal me. All of a right. sudden, that healing has to come from somewhere else. Uh, and so it's interesting to see how the game is already compensating for those different job classes that I don't have. Yeah. Uh, but I also think one of the things I like about it is that it is, it is like I said before, it's kind of like a hardcore Skyrim because you, you will die. Um, it's, it's a game that's very interested in the mechanics of traveling. Mm -hmm. Like just going from point A to point B is difficult. Um, one of the early quests you have is just like go south for a bit into this other city. And that took me like a solid four hours just because I'm, I want to see what's on these side paths. I want to explore the area around me. Uh, and then that goes off into its own quests. But then it's like, oh, I got like halfway there. And like I said, I got hurt enough that my health is low. I need to go back, make a camp then go forward the next day. Oh, I've collected too many things. Now I'm like over encumbered. So I'm going to go back to camp. I'm going to go back to an inn, mm -hmm. drop some stuff off, combine some items, sell some items, basically unload all the stuff, then go back out into the world. And thankfully this isn't like a, um, a Dark Souls game where every time you rest, all the enemies respawn. I found that if you clear out an area, if you come back, there might be a couple enemies there but not as much as there was the first time. And so generally, you kind of do this slow push into the, the wilderness where you go a little bit one day and then you come back and rest. Then you push forward a little bit more one day and come back and rest and push forward a little bit more. And so there's this nice cycle of exploration and like pushing into the wild, untamed wilderness full of monsters that it just feels really good. But it's it's interesting because it's not based in the narrative or anything. It's just the mechanics of the game working together to make exploration really, really compelling and fun and challenging. That's so cool. I'm yeah. I'm I oh man, this, I'm I'm a little intimidated by the fact that there here's another game <laughs> that I know is like the problem with what is happening in games lately for me is that I go these long, long, long times without any games. that's an ED game. And then all of a sudden it's like, bam, 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 three ED games right after each other. It's so frustrating because I don't have enough time to play all of them. Mm -hmm. So I have to pick one. And then all the whole time while I'm playing one, I'm wondering about the other. I feel if like I'm cheating. <laughs> If if I had forced myself to keep playing Baldur's Gate, I think I would be really resentful towards the game at this point just because it would have prevented me from playing other things. And so I, I think it's really good for me personally, my approach to that game to like take a break from it because now every time we play it a little bit more, it's like, oh man, I got to go back to that. I got to go back to that. Yeah. But I will say... I, I haven't even touched Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which was a game I was really looking forward to. But, like, uh, 
I played Lords of the Fallen. I played Hell Divers, and then all of a sudden, Dragon's Dogma comes out, and it's like, well, okay, can't yeah. do that. And I knew you were never going to get back. I'm going to stay on you to complete our playthrough of Baldur's Gate because I'm enjoying our playthrough of Baldur's Gate more than I'm playing my, enjoying my game playthrough okay. of Baldur's Gate. At this point, I, I will say, I will say, because it feels like we are speeding through our playthrough together. Like, inevitably, we'll hit Act 3 before I do it in my game. Yeah. And at that point... Yeah. You, then you, you have a problem. There, then you got a problem. Well, at that point, I need to, like, make a mental note to not play as I normally do. Because right now, it's very easy for me to say, yeah, let's just skip the Underdog. Whatever. I've yeah. seen all of that. Yeah. But it's much harder for me to, like, get a quest and then be like, yeah, no, fuck that quest. Yeah, and skipping the Underdark will affect uh, Act 3, seriously. We're very really? much, oh, yes. Oh, yes. People you meet in Act, in, in the Underdark, everybody you meet in the Underdark shows up. Not everybody. But a lot of things that you end up doing in the rest of the game, when you get into Baldur's Gate, those either those people are there or the, the effects of those people being there. Like our decision to not free a slight spoiler alert, free the fairy that is in the um the lantern while you go no, through I, I don't think we made that decision yet. Okay, because that's a decision that absolutely comes back to affect you. Really? Oh yes. So Ooh. many, so many decisions that you make. Like, oh well, that shit. I remember you. Well, that's going to be really interesting because uh, since we sided with the cult, uh -huh. our lamp bearer is that spider-like dude. Right. So we never even got the option to break the lamp because we never had the lamp. Uh, right. We just followed him. Right. Interesting. Yeah. So we never got that option. He's gone. He's long gone. That lamp's gone. Mm -hmm. So cool We're, that's going to affect us that is going to affect an encounter later on every all encounters in, re relate to each other hmm. the baldur's gate is a very small town <laughs> it really <laughs> really is it's kind of like being a dick in a like a very small town in the midwest you do something here and everybody hears about it and it's uh, the ne next thing you know you're meeting a stranger and they're like oh yeah i heard about you hmm. okay that's cool yeah uh yeah in the chat uh andrew and ac wraith are talking it's okay uh, you can like let let um, Dragon's Dogma two sit for a little bit mm -hmm. because there's a it, it's kind of been caught up in a lot of performance issues, especially on PC. Uh, we'll get into it with news. Like Capcom added microtransactions after the game came out mm -hmm. uh, that upset a lot of people, and generally it's the kind of thing where ah eh, wait a month. Let all the patches come through, and then you can think about buying it. But yeah, we can get into that with uh, news, because um, that's kind of all that I've played is Dragon's Dogman, Helldivers. I love you, AC Wraith. You, 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 you work so well. You work so well. Um, and no, AC Wraith, if you know, you know. AC Wraith, you and me. Um, all right. So I want to point out that, uh, there is somebody, a couple of people in the chat. Um, there was, uh, Lambo Calrissian is back in the chat. Hey, you, oh. it's been a while. And of course we've got that. chaos in the chat. Who's, uh, probably getting ready to go to work because he has to work tonight. Cause he always has to work every night because he's chaos. Um, any other games? That's it. All right. Then uh, we may as well uh, hit the news. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm a little afraid to hit it. Let's hit the news. This Just keep it low. Discusses. Nope. 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 I'm only second to stop. 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 All right. Let's hit the news. I'll give you a thumbs up, a thumbs down. This is the Game Hounds News, the news news and commentary of the week in gaming with gamer idiot Nick Danicola. And our first item is really? Is it still cutting out? 
there's, it's not cutting out, but there's like a bubble popping? A bubble popping. Interesting. Yeah. It's, I could hear you, and your voice wasn't cutting out. Yeah. But at the end of, like, every word, there was like a... Oh, that's, that's the gate. That's why they call it a gate. Its gate is opening and closing. That's why gating sound is that it won't, you won't hear it if it's a certain level, but once it reaches a certain volume, then it pops in and that's what it is. It's called, it's, it's like a, a gate opening and closing and that's, you're hearing the, the <laughs> streaming debut. Fuck off. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you're a dick. <laughs> Uh yeah, so so that's that's now you understand what a gate is. Uh, so yeah, that's that's that happened. So uh, first item is Nick. You've got way more items than I do. Yes, well, let's. We were just talking about Dragon's Dogma. Uh huh. Uh, it's kind of been embroiled in some microtransaction controversy, which mm -hmm. I do. It's it's an interesting situation because on one hand, a lot of it is the complaints are justified. But on the other hand, it's completely overblown and completely misses the real issue. So what happened was the game got sent out to reviewers, got sent out to streamers, right? People are publishing it, playing it early. The day of release, it gets patched and Capcom adds a microtransaction store to it for things that weren't in the game during the review period. It generally, like, kind of an underhanded move. Yes. It is. It is. It, like, there's no argument there. So, the thing about Dragon's Dogma that you have to understand is that, like, I was saying before, it's it's kind of a hardcore game. It's like a hardcore Skyrim. Resources are kind of limited. <laughs> yes, I saw the, the women's in refrigerators earlier. <laughs> Easy <read. laughs> uh... uh Yeah, so... It's a game that kind of limits your inventory on purpose. Fast travel. I have not fast traveled anywhere in the game because fast travel is a very rare ability. It requires items that are expensive to do. Um, items, basically, whenever you summon another pawn into your game, if you travel with them long enough, you'll get something called a wakestone shard. If you get three of those shards, you can combine them into a wake stone. And that is basically a revive potion, right? If one of your characters dies, if any character dies, an NPC dies, you can use a wake stone to revive them. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that requires you to summon and play with the other people's pawns for a pretty long time. It's a game designed to kind of you know, you're not going to become this badass in five hours of playing. Like, it's it doles things out very slowly. But what that means is then when Capcom adds a microtransaction for, hey, you want, like, three wake stones for a buck? Mm -hmm. it, it feels like, oh, you, you designed a game around microtransactions, right? If... It feels like, uh, especially for people that like, coming into this game without having played the first one, I imagine it's very easy to feel like it's a game that is purposely designed to give out resources slowly in order to push you into the microtransactions. Which is just like, it, it's not true, but I see where that feeling comes from. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but what's interesting is that, so like I said, fast travel is, fast travel is like one of the big sticking points, right? It's like, oh, to fast travel, you need a port key. Uh, and like, those are really rare. They're really expensive. And you can buy them from the store, which feels like, oh, you're just, you're letting people pay to skip the line, right? You're letting people pay for fast travel. Mm -hmm. Except that that's not entirely the case. Uh, right. Because of port crystals, not port keys. Uh, so how fast travel works is every big city has a port crystal. You can find a port crystal or buy one from the store, and you can drop that into the world at a different location. So if I go to a big city and then I go to like a dungeon, I can drop a port crystal in front of the dungeon, 
and then fast travel between them, you know, from the city to dungeon. Mm -hmm. You can buy those port crystals, but the game still limits you to only being able to place 10 of them in the world at any given moment. Mm -hmm. Right. So even if you buy them, that doesn't mean you can place an infinite number of them. You're still limited. But also, and this is the key, you can buy a port crystal, but in order to actually fast travel, you need a different item. Mm -hmm. Like a fairy item. So you can buy the port crystal, place it in the world, but because you don't have the fairy item, mm -hmm. you can't actually use it. Right. So in a way, they're not actually selling fast travel because... But they're selling a, 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 an important component to fast travel. They're selling an important component, but it's like they're not actually selling fast travel. But also, that might be kind of worse because now you just spent three bucks buying an item right. that's functionally the, useless. Useless, exactly. That's almost it is worse. It is worse to do that because there, you can actually say, "Oh, we're not actually selling; we're just selling you the ability to possibly mm -hmm. fast travel if you do more work." It's like fuck you. Just either sell trans fast travel or don't sell fast travel. Yes. D don't don't give me this. Oh oh, you know, like oh, it's an essential component to it. It's still selling fast travel, but it's worse because you now you have to work even further after spending the money. That's even worse. Yeah. To, to worse. buy it, place it in the world, and then realize, oh, I can't even use this until like I play for another 10 hours. Exactly. Exactly. That's but, like that's like selling somebody, like going to a restaurant, making them pay up front for the food, and then handing them the chicken and a frying pan and saying the kitchen's back there that's not right that ain't okay if you're gonna sell something you sell it you don't sell a part of it and then make somebody work for the fucking rest of it that's just bad business period but here's the other kicker um is that like all that all that it's bad but like it's not really bad but also in the grand scheme of things when you look at these microtransactions mm -hmm. It feels like they come from an era, a different era of microtransactions, in that these microtransactions are actually micro. It's a dollar, it's two dollars, it's three dollars. Mm -hmm. And in an age where an Apex Legends skin is 20 bucks, and where like colored portals in Diablo are 40 dollars, right? And where, uh, uh, Packages in Marvel Snap of in-game currency can exceed a hundred dollars. Yeah, it's like, oh man, you're asking me three dollars for poor crystals? Fuck yeah, I'll buy that. It's three dollars. Yeah, it's yeah. like, you know, it's mm. at the same time. Yeah, it's okay. You're, you're you're I don't give them a pass because the prices are so cheap. That's like saying, oh, but think about how cheap that that meal is. You know that that you have to cook. <laughs> When you I mean, go look, it is to it is our cheaper, restaurant. It is cheaper to cook your own food than it is to go out. So you know, it's right, right. But if I'm going to cook my own food, I'm going to cook my own food. I'm not going to go to a restaurant and have them hand me the food and then make me cook my own food. But they've That's got a restaurant a quality thing. kitchen, isn't that worth something? Nope. <laughs> I don't know, Nick. Would you make a great meal in a restaurant quality kitchen? Oh, if I handed not. you the, if I handed you the, the ingredients, exactly. Mm -hmm. No, but when you go out to eat, you're going to go out to eat. Not going to yeah. go out to make food. There's the difference. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of this, it's it's just a weird situation of, boy, that was really underhanded to put that in the game after reviews came out. And but then, then what they put in is also shitty. Yeah, but then, like, what you put in is, like, well, you're not actually selling any shortcuts so it's like not actually i'm not actually paying to win even though it's that's game, splitting you can't of do that hairs. anyways but then it's like well also it's really cheap and it's really not as exploitative as it could be but also like you're not even giving me the complete bonus for that's buying. when you say it's not as exploitative as it could be that's they're they're splitting hairs they're oh, yes. absolutely it's splitting hairs. They're still selling you something that should be free. And moreover, they're not even selling the whole thing now. To give them the excuse of saying, oh, we're not actually selling it. We're just giving you a component to it. Like, that makes it better. 
it is absolutely splitting hairs and it's splitting hairs in a very, very bad way. And absolutely they should be nailed to the wall for that. But see, I don't think they should be nailed to the wall because like it's it's not really that bad. It's just the whole thing is like it's worse. Oh, that's, that's kind of bad. Oh, but that's not that bad. Oh, but that's also kind of bad. Oh, but that's not that bad. Oh, right. Kind of it's, bad. And, you know and what? It's what, bad. What it's it. bad. It all comes out to bad. It's bad. It's 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 not only just bad. It's actually worse because they're trying to mm, split let's, hairs. It's let's, it's let's de- say, it's not only bad. It's deceptively bad. No, I see. I don't want to say bad because bad is like a two out of 10. I'm going to say it's poor. This is like a four out of 10 situation, right? It's not, it's not two. It's four. It's like, eh. yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not with you on that. I think that they absolutely <laughs> should be paying to win to only matter in multiplayer competitive. True. That's absolutely yeah. true. And like the, the idea of, Hey, if you just want to buy some fast travel in this game, like, I'm not entirely against that idea. Like, it feels like that should be okay. Uh, Chaos says, okay, point to make. It can be all begotten in game. I think it's unnecessary to add. And Nick's like, guys, you don't want to, you don't understand. He only yells at me when he's drunk. He's oh, normally a good guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What he I'm only saying beats is... me when he's drunk. <laughs> look, the rest of the time he's an absolute doll look he's so we live dreamy. we live in an age of microtransactions you cannot get those out of games if you're if you're uh opposed to this on the philosophical idea of i don't want microtransactions in games that's bad i'm against this because it exists you've already lost that fight and at this point you're just being naive about the state of the industry but but that's what makes this so much worse is that these are the worst kind of matching microtransactions and that they're not even no, in no but these are the better they're not kinds. actually buying anything they're just taking your money for nothing these are the better kinds because they're actually micro and you're not like paying the price of a full game for some cosmetic you're actually buying something that will be useful in game maybe not immediately but it will be useful down the line nope nope Nope. Nope. Yes. I'm with yes. I'm with chaos on this one. This is all bad. This is all no. kinds of bad. This is fine. Speaking of uh spending more money for less or things, uh, and hey. th- thank you, thank you for somebody in the chat room to bring this up to me, or at least to have mentioned it. Uh V Bucks, are you aware? No, we actually me and um um AC Wraith looked this up that someone asked about the V Bucks conversion to Euro going up. But we looked at that, and both of us could only find a story from September of last year. Was it September of last year? Yeah, I, I couldn't find oh, anything yeah, you're recently. Right. Uh, yeah, about it's nothing it going recent. Up. Yeah, but there is a, an issue of what happened was is that uh, V bucks to Euro exchange went up, meaning that it was going to cost you more euros for V bucks by about thirty percent. So it cost you thirty yeah. percent more euros to get a V buck. And I remember we talked about it last year when it happened. We we did, and uh, thank you for bringing it up again because man, is is a there's a part of me that's like, well, everything gets more expensive, but this is a made up currency in a gold exchange that doesn't exist, and yet they're applying real world cost of living increases on that. Fuck you! It's just I, all kinds of like stupidity in that. So to answer your question, we think it's fucking stupid. And somebody has a coke habit. <laughs> Tim Sweeney. Um, yeah, it's it's a, it's a terrible idea. So I'm sorry that you guys yeah. are getting fucked over. But then again, you got to expect it. It's Fortnite. This is what they do. They're they're t- <laughs> they sell they com- sell twenty dollars skins. They tell twenty dollars skins to ten to ten year old kids with their mm-hmm. parents' credit card. That's what they do. See. Doesn't drag my, Dragon's Dogma sound so much better in comparison? You know, <laughs> yes, but by comparison only. Look, it's like he look, doesn't beat me half as much as the other guy. Do Have you, you want, seen that other guy? Do you want to lose an arm, or do you want to lose like the first digit of your? I finger? don't want to lose anything. That's well, that's like, Edie, That's not an option. You're gonna lose part of it. No, really? it's, you're gonna lose part of the limb. Yeah, see, yeah. I've I've been dating Pretty Larian, good. and Larian hasn't beat me once. Not even once. Just well, 
Well, speaking of Larian, yes. Um, they don't beat you, but they will break up with you, because Larian has said that uh, they're done with dragon. They're done with uh, Dungeons and Dragons, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, they won't be making Baldur's Gate Four, and they won't be making DLC for Baldur's Gate Three. That they're going to continue to update BG3 with patches and stuff, but they I hope so because with... they still haven't provided us uh, multiplayer, uh, cross cross platform yeah, multiplayer. But but they've they've moved on to other things, and I think they That's I fine. think that they specifically brought this up because in a I think it was an earnings call, like a couple weeks ago, uh, Hasbro had mentioned, "Hey, look, BG3 really took off." We want to invest more in video games. And so I think that seeing the success of Baldur's Gate 3, Hasbro probably approached Larian about making Baldur's Gate 4. Mm -hmm. uh, and Larian probably declined that because they want to continue with their own thing. They've, I, I think their previous games, Divinity, run, I don't think they're, they run on D&D systems. I think that's largely the, their own system. It's, it's very so. similar. Yeah. Um I mean all systems are kind of a Yeah, true. It's all bit of D and D and var variations kind of... on a theme. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I imagine they were approached by Hasbro to like, hey, do you want to be the Baldur's Gate company? Yeah. And they were like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I if you remember, there was this whole discussion of possibly Tencent purchasing the permanent, if not the per, not the IP itself, the permanent rights to Baldur's oh, Gate yeah. three games. Oh yeah, uh, uh, D and D. They wanted to the D and D games for D and D. Yeah. D and D games. I'm. I don't know that that's necessarily not part this this being not part of that discussion. Of like, oh, you're not going to sell us D and D. Well, we're not going to make any D and D games for you. Why would you think that? Oh, We're I think not make any ball on any D. You're gonna have to find somebody else to make your next D and D game. I don't think that they turned it down out of spite like that. I think they turned it down because they didn't want to be tied to this franchise. Look, Maybe they, I don't want to be tied to this franchise that I'm not they married to. BG4. I don't want to. I don't want to take it out on a date. I don't. Want to, I don't want to go date it again. Yeah, if, if they made I already dated you. If they made BG four, they'd be expected to make BG five and BG six, and like they we, they would become the BG that company. Yeah, the BG, yeah. BG company. And I can see them as someone who, like, they they only took this job because they have really fond memories of the original Baldur's Gate games. That like it was a formative thing for them that got them into RPGs, and they're like, mm -hmm. hey, if we have the opportunity to make a Baldur's Gate game, we want to do that. But like, hey, dream come true. We did it. It was a big hit. Right. Like, how do we top this? We don't even try. Uh, and so I imagine Hasbro is probably going to shop around that IP to someone else. I. After the success of BG3, they want to make a fourth one. Yeah. The question um, is, is any, does anybody else want to make that? Yes. The question is, who do they give it to? Not who do they give it to? Does any other company want to do it? That yeah, that's also thing. Because if you, if I had a company and somebody's like, oh, Baldur's uh, uh, Larian doesn't want to make the next Baldur's Gate, would you like to make the next Baldur's Gate? I don't know that I'd want to touch that because the the bar. First off, Larian spent how many years making Baldur's Gate three? Like like six. Exactly, like a stupid amount of time. To make a really, really good game that has no microtransactions. Okay. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, at this point, the next game could only disappoint. Okay, so Andrew has some more context to add. He says that this got expanded on more. They started working on a DLC. They found that there was no heart in it and that no one was looking forward to it. They wanted to do interesting combat things but couldn't. But but couldn't within the framework of fifty Dungeons and Dragons, yeah. which makes sense because a lot of what's really good about BG three is like the interesting combat scenarios you get into, and so I imagine if you know th they're looking at that framework and going ah, but what if we changed this? What if we changed that? And eventually, they're just like not uh, not in 
D and D anymore. Thank you for the link to Daggerheart. <laughs> yeah, Critical Role did like a whole uh, gaming session of that that I want to yep. watch. Yep, I do too. They, uh, they were talking about the system, and it sounded kind of interesting in that every time you rolled, instead of like rolling a d twenty, you rolled two dice, and you two rolled sixties. No, or I forget what the, I forget what the number is. Okay. Um, it doesn't really matter. What matters is like one is the hope die, and one is your like fear die. Oh, if your hope die is higher, higher than your fear die, or like let's say you have to pass like a five check. Right. If you pass that with your hope die, then you succeed and you get like a hope token that you can use. If you succeed with the fear die, you succeed, but there's a consequence and the DM gets a fear token that they can use against you later on. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. I don't know if I like the idea of the DM being an antagonist to the, yeah, rest like of the party. You got it. You got to get DM is God. Like DM, the DM is God. The, the DM should like, I mean, it should be of that same kind of mindset of like, I have no opinion either way no. on this. No. Uh, I, I just, I am a, I am just here to kind of, I don't want to say to be the arbiter, but be a personality within your experience, but not necessarily against you or for you. Maybe I'm against you at this moment, but I'll be for you later. Oh, yeah. He says fear and hope. They're D12s. Okay. It's it's a matter of yes and or yes but to make more interesting story moments instead of just pass or fail. Got it. Got it. Okay. I like that. I like yeah. that idea. So anyways. Conveniently now, enough, my, my, my oh. thing that I do when I'm like trying to think through stuff, especially now that I have it next to my computer since it's tax season, as I'm trying to work through stuff is actually roll a d12 just sit here and just roll a d12 just 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 to kind of think oh, 11 um yeah just sit there and roll a d12 just for fun that's how i kind of i don't want to say a, a stress reducer but a bit of a stress yeah, reducer. that's your that's your little d12. squeezy guy yeah yep that's your fidget spinner that's my fidget spinner is my d12 hmm. so uh so yeah and it is both hope and fear all the time whenever i'm doing taxes <laughs> I don't need a fidget toy. I don't need a fidget toy. I have my D12. Yeah, she has a fidget toy. All the time. Always with me sitting yeah. here. So so now I think the next big uh, like conspiracy story in gaming is going to be like rumors of, ooh, who's, who's making Baldur's Gate 4? Who's doing it? Oh, the rumors that Bioware is going to do it again? No, no, they're not going to do it again. Hasbro's not going to give it to Bioware. Who they, who's another big RPG? Is it going to be Bethesda? Well, no, oh, maybe they will give it to but that's that make it first person. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, uh, I would be interested if it was maybe CD Projekt Red, but that would be mm. almost, almost a kiss of death for CD Projekt Red. Yeah. That's also they're like very different systems, a very different systems, but also they couldn't, it's almost one of the reasons why I think they didn't want to do a, another Witcher because Witcher <laughs> three was so popular. It could only be a disappointment. Yeah. Well, the, they went back to Witcher four after cyberpunk. Yeah. Hey, yeah. And just like Bioware would just, yeah, be because sad. now, Cyber, now, now that the, the, their last game was such a quote unquote failure that they're, everything's up, you know, everything's like a improvement of, as long as it's not a horrible, miserable failure on launch, it's already better than the last game. Yeah, they made. So yeah, the 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 uh the next the next uh Baldur's Gate is cursed, and everyone knows it because no no one could make a better game than what that was. Or if they do, it's going to be really hard, really expensive, and really slow. Yes. Yep. Sadly, Larian was a perfect studio out of the current ones. I'm not sure there's anyone doing things like them. Maybe spiders. That's no. That's yes. You're right, but like Spider, there's Larian, and then there's like, like there's like Bioware, and yeah. then there's like yeah, exactly, way spider. down the list. But this would be like, and, a, and but, I say this to see, someone who generally enough. likes their. Here's game. the thing: is if they made a slightly not as great Baldur's Gate, it would be like, ah, eh, we're gonna give them a pass because it's spiders. This is so much better than any spider. This is so much more ambitious, so much so bigger. 
better than any Spider's game before. They've got nothing to lose and, and everything to gain by actually doing a Baldur's Gate 3. Whereas if Bioware did it, they have everything to lose and nothing to gain. They, they have reputation to gain. It would be good, but yeah, no, Spider's... Not like Spider... Oh. Not really much of a... You know, it's like if it, it would just be essentially if it, 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 any disappointment would be like fucking Bioware again fucks it up. Fucking Bioware. We, they used to be good and now they suck. Yeah. That would be the answer if it wasn't perfect. It would be interesting to like, I, I think the idea of do Baldur's Gate 4 That's is interesting. Cursed, I thought. But the idea of just doing a spin off, right? Just do Baldur's Gate. Actually, wait, there was a series of games that came out on like the original Xbox called like uh, Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance that okay. were first-person adventure games in the vein of Skyrim. Yeah. So yeah, just get 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 CD Projekt Red to remake Dark Alliance. That'd that's, be interesting. That's the big brain uh, answer. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, my next item is... Let's see. Um... What do I have? What do I have? What do I have? Oh, speaking, actually, I don't know. Speaking of, speaking of gross things to drink, I don't know. I don't know if you heard, but uh, there was an update to Stardew Valley. Much anticipated. Lots oh, of things God. happening. Um, Stardew Valley, this by is, the way. This is why you were asking eyes. about the spelling. How to spell mayonnaise. This is God. exactly why I was asking how to, spe to, to spell mayonnaise. Because amongst all of the other quality of life issues and updates that happened all by the way this just came out on march 19th which was was like monday ish um eric barone the had tweeted out a bunch of random patch notes leading up to it things like bug fixes and that it was faster to um harvest left to right than it was right to left kind of stuff like that and then dropped in there somewhere was you can now drink mayonnaise. Absolutely official now. Stardew Valley, you can drink mayonnaise. Oh, God, that's disgusting. <laughs> that's what everybody says. Oh. They're just like, oh, that's gross. Now, what is your opinion of mayonnaise? It's disgusting. Really? You don't like yeah. mayonnaise? No. I, I like it. I like it when it's mixed in with stuff to the point where I can't actually taste it. I love mayonnaise. Like, uh, like tuna? Good on tuna fish sandwich. Mm -hmm. Um. Um. Good those... on fries. Oh God, no. Good on a spoon. Oh, uh, I love mayonnaise. I love mayonnaise. I wouldn't eat it. I, I, I could eat a spoon of it, but I would only eat like maybe one spoon. I wouldn't like eat like drink it. That's kind of gross. But okay. I do like mayonnaise a lot. <laughs> I would take mayonnaise over ketchup any day of the week. Really? Yeah, I'm not a big fan. I mean, ketchup's fine, but I don't really see of it being like much of a taste. Like, I'll I'll put my fries in. Like, maybe if I have a big thing of fries, I'll get a small cup of ketchup and maybe like dab one or two of them. And the rest of them, I'll just eat the fries normal. Uh, ketchup doesn't belongs nowhere near a hot dog. Nowhere near a hot dog. That is a um a crime against nature. I really don't like ketchup on burgers. I mean, they're hmm. it's okay on a burger, really? but not great. I would rather have mustard and mayonnaise on a burger. Ketchup is great for making um, uh, uh, Japanese spaghetti. I love Japanese spaghetti, but and and barbecue sauce is a component of barbecue sauce. But yeah, I'd rather have mayonnaise on just about everything. Hmm. Where you could put a condiment on. I wouldn't put it on things that it's not good. Yeah, I would put almost any condiment on before mayonnaise. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so you can drink mayonnaise. Something to look forward to. Yay! <laughs> I, I also heard on a podcast that one of the things they updated was... Okay, so in Saudi Valley, if you plant seeds from, like, left to right... Yes, it took X amount of time. And yes. if you planted it from right to left, it took like X plus yes. 20. That's what I'm saying. Is it that they fixed that? Yes. It was milliseconds. Milliseconds <laughs> difference. People were like, 
I, this I, is I, this for, is Stardew we're like, talking I, about. People are very, very, very obsessed with their Stardew. And like for a while, it was this conspiracy theory of like, wait, is it really faster to plant it one way or another? And this is confirmation that it was faster, but it now it's better. the same speed going both directions. Yep. Oh, yeah. And now things like uh, pickles and jelly are going to be colored differently depending on uh, the ingredient. So that's a big thing because it's like, how is it that you can make something with like something purple? Like you can make grape jelly, but it wouldn't be purple. It would be the same color as apple jelly. So, uh, Andrew, can you drink mayo in taco? He says, the only reason I play card Markov is to down mayo. <laughs> really? I didn't know that you could drink, drink mayo in Tarkov. That'd be such a weird addition. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, you can drink your Star your Tarkov dreams. Oh, yeah, you can drink mayo <laughs> in Tarkov. So there's two games where you could drink mayo. Officially oh, confirmed. Look, if there's one more, it becomes a trend. Yeah, that's we true. just need one more. It you it used to dehydrate it used to dehydrate you so you can do a quest. Oh, so it's used to to dehydrate you. I don't know. Does mayo dehydrate you? Like eating mayo? I mean, I should try it. I could I try know. it. Do you I love mayo? Dehydrated? I know, but I really like mayo. Mayo on French fries is really good, Nick. It's really, really no, good. No, it's not. I've tried it. It's kind of like, it's, I also, like, my favorite, favorite, favorite thing on on French fries is uh, malt vinegar. And this is just kind of like another that's, that's idea of malt vinegar that is kind of like this sourness to it, this, this that's tartness. Where you, that's where you lose me. But that's what vinegar is. It's sour tartness that mixes well with the potato. No. Have you ever just ate a jar of mayo? I'm never Pretty sure you mayo. might have a dry mouth after. Yeah, I, I have. I have never eaten a whole jar of mayo and nothing else. I've eaten a jar of mayo over a period of time, like with tuna fish sandwiches. I am addicted to tuna fish sandwiches. I have to be very careful because I, if left to my own devices, I will eat tuna fish every single day, hmm. which is really, really, really not good for you because tuna is full of like mercury and a bunch of other crap you shouldn't. I mean, they tell people you shouldn't have more than one tuna fish sandwich a week really oh yeah pregnant women in particular are warned to not eat mayo uh, not eat tuna fish at all if they can possibly help it huh. before we find out there was no actual difference in the planning speed but they got tired of people <laughs> saying it so they just threw it in the batch notes really is that true Ooh. i would love that i would love that no he's saying he's in before that okay. comes out has oh, the, right the awful secret tuna truth. is a staple in my house i just had it oh tuna melts oh, it's my favorite sandwich in all time now see now i'm hungry let's hurry this up i need to make a tuna melt okay uh let's talk about things not going well things not going well we can do that um things are not going well over at bungie mm -hmm. so ign uh released a story about how uh the leadership in Bungie uh, on Marathon specifically is getting shifted around. How the longtime Bungie designer Christopher Barrett was the game director, but has been replaced by former Valorant game director Joe Ziegler uh, nine months ago. And only before the uh, Rebecca who wrote this article reached out to Bungie for comment on it in order to get ahead of the story. Joe Ziegler then sent out a tweet saying, hey, guess what? Nine months ago, I took over Bungie. Oh, I took over Marathon as game director of Marathon. So he had not, nobody had known that he'd taken it over no one outside knew. of the company. Exactly. And people were like, well, wait, why? Mm -hmm. um, there's also rumors that under his leadership, uh, the game is moving away from custom player creators in order to... Uh, to favor a selectable cast of heroes. Basically, to make it more of a hero shooter along the lines of Valorant and less custom character designed like Tarkov. Interesting. And a lot of people who were excited about Marathon really rejected that. Oh, like, mm -hmm. absolutely no, we don't want that at all. Uh, but that's just issues over the leadership of Marathon. Mm -hmm. um, 
what's also mentioned in, in this article is, uh, I'm just going to read this. There are growing fears and rumors that layoffs will immediately follow the release of Destiny 2's final expansion. Mm -hmm. One person with knowledge of budgets at Bungie told me that nothing adds up, quotes, uh, and, quote, something will need to happen to curb costs unless the final shape does so well to cover the gap and people can move on to Marathon. So it basically sounds like Bungie is doing so poorly that unless the final shape is the biggest DLC they've ever made, there will still be additional layoffs in the lead up to Marathon. Like the the budgets just aren't adding up. Right. Um, and there was a there's another poster on Reddit uh who you take with a grain of salt, who was also talking about this that basically says uh Sony is really disappointed in Bungie that it's basically seen as a failed investment right now. Um, and that they're mainly focused at recouping costs from that investment. Interesting, which would make more, make a lot of sense of the way that they're handling things that it's just about, we need to crank out as much cash as we can because we're, yeah, we're um, not willing to invest any more into this. Uh, this was from the Reddit post that overall Sony has been very upset at Bungie leadership. They've not been able to successfully advise Sony's teams. And while Lightfall hit internal revenue targets, every target since then has been missed at an escalating decline. Mm -hmm. um, but one one reason to take that with a grain of salt is that a lot of Bungie fans also really, really, really hate the Bungie leadership team. Mm -hmm. If there's like one unifying thing about like the fan base for Destiny is that they hate the leadership team at that company. Mm -hmm. So any news story that comes out about how incompetent they are or about how messy they are, about how things are not going well under them, about, you know, the it's it's to the point where when there's talk about Sony taking over Bungie, people are like, oh, good, good. Right. This needs to happen. Like the current leadership team needs to be replaced. Yeah, and I'm not exactly disagreeing with them. Yeah, so well, it's Bungie. Bungie has done a really good job at fucking up a success. Yeah, well, it's, it's failing it's, miserably it's since since it had its you know destiny successes. Ever yeah. since then, they just kind of have been done the best that they could possibly can to squander whatever goodwill they've had and pump out really not very good seasons and yeah, well, I, I remember Destiny. I remember they were talking about um like this was six months ago mm -hmm. or so when it came out after they got bought by Sony like the finances kind of came out and like oh wait Bungie's in a way worse place than anyone expected right everyone and, thought that they were making and I think that Bungie thought that they were making a lot of money yeah. In fact, that's exactly how they were acting was that their shit didn't stink and that they made a ton of money. And then finally the truth came out that it's like, oh yeah, you don't, A, don't make as nearly as much money as you think you make. And B, you're not as popular as you think you are. You might have been before, but you are living on your former glory and assuming that you can't fail. And the thing is that the, 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 the game, their fans have shown them that absolutely they can fail. You cannot put out shovelware and yeah. uh, get away with it forever from your fan base. Yeah, Chaos says that uh, he thinks Sony made a bet on Benji that Bungie that wasn't just about Destiny 2. It was about uh, when money was cheap during the pandemic. They saw everyone playing live service games, thought right. it was the perfect time right. uh, to pivot to live service. Right. But That's then the other pandemic thing that happened. and all that dried up. Yep, the and bottom Sony fell out of was, life service. Yeah, I like that. Sony was left holding an empty bag. Yeah, yeah, a lot of companies bought in which, on this idea has, of live service fair. and thinking, and Bungie does know how to do a live service, but the problem is is that, you know, they should have known that we it was going to be a point where the well, live I service mean, model wasn't going to be... Like, I, don't, I don't think Bungie does know how to do live service because what we've seen from that financial report was that, like, they're mm -hmm. kind of steadily losing money that the truth is live service games are so expensive to maintain because you need to keep pumping out so much right. content that like you you have to invest so much to get a return true like, you you have to be a multi 
million dollar company to make Fortnite. Right. And and I I mean, I guess if they were going to say one company that does what is what is the one company that you think that does know how to make a live service game? Fortnite. Uh, Epic. Yeah. OK. I'd say Epic Rockstar. And, see, I don't I wouldn't say Rockstar. I think they lucked out with GTA. Um, and I, think I don't a think lot they of... lucked out on GTA. Oh, they absolutely they, lucked they, out. They, that that could have easily not gone the way that it did. They just pulled it out. I mean, how many of us jumped on it, played a lot of it, and then left? And it has only gotten yeah. more popular since because of the decisions that they made after they released it. They pivoted that online game. Yes, but I think they've they've pivoted in a way that they did they did live service before live service was even a word. Here's here's and my they were able to pivot it into this new idea. Here's my maybe uh pointless semantics argument. I don't think GTA 6 is a live service game. I think it's an MMO. No. No, uh, Andrew says GTA had the strongest foundation of almost any game I've seen. The reason it did well, but it was not with the intention of being like service. Yeah, <laughs> no, it wasn't that... the intention to be. It was about yeah. intended to be an MMO, but they pivoted it towards a live service. Once live service became a viable model, mm, I don't think so. Once they saw the writing on the wall and they realized, I don't even think that they thought of it being live service. They just said, "Hey, this is how we can make more money." <laughs> we we need someone in like our group to play GTA to tell us whether it's more yeah. live service or more MMO. And yeah. honestly, like what is really the distinction between them? Cause like all MMOs have to be live service games, but not all live service games are MMOs. Yeah. It's like this weird, weird square and rectangle situation. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, wait, well, what, was, you, what was your definition of an else? MMO is if you can, what was it, it emotes can, and dance? Yeah. But like, Hell Divers has emotes. I know have, by your by your definition, Hell Divers is an MMO. But it doesn't have dancing. Oh, it doesn't have dancing, but it has emotes. Um, but also, Chaos said that uh, weird. They said it. He was talking about Marathon. Didn't they say it was an extraction shooter? Now, a hero extraction shooter is such a terrible idea. Which I got to push back on a little bit slightly because Rainbow Six Siege. No, not Siege. Uh, what was the one we played with Chris on Game Pass a whole bunch? Extraction. It was just called Extraction. Rainbow Six Extraction. Yeah, like that is basically a hero shooter. It is. In that you... And it is an extraction hero shooter. Yeah, and like it's it's actually pretty good. It's actually really good. Yeah. It's not, you know, take over your life good, but it's really good. Yeah, and like the, the hero aspect of it doesn't really detract from the extraction aspect of it. <sighs> of course you can. Okay, good. While you do that, I'm going to get a cable for the headphones to plug in. Uh, really? Well, while you bring uh, Chaos in. Well, once Chaos comes in, then I'll, I'll switch over. Uh, not Anna. I can't find you now. Where Chaos, what is your freaking... Ugh, I can't rem not going to send it to that guy who... Damn it. Um, I'm trying to find you. Your your your. I don't have your Facebook or your uh, email address anymore. Ace do I do I need to do like a quick news story? There we go. Ace we'll do this. Yeah, that should the you do you have access to your Gamehounds email still? Uh, chaos. Because I just sent it to your Gamehounds, which I believe forwards to your regular. There we go. That's what it is. Really? You've got to do something about that. Seriously, you've got to do something about that. Uh, here we go. Email. Yeah, and you know what I'm talking about. You need to get rid of that. That You need to, to get rid of the company that is providing you that email. No, it is not the best. Hotmail is not okay. Yes, I... I I absolutely, whenever I, I get lots of like um, 
resumes to just like cold resumes sent to our contact at for our company. Mm. Get a lot of them. And I absolutely will not forward any email that is sent to us or any uh, any um, uh, resume that is sent to us with a Hotmail or an AOL.com domain. I just, it's like, if you have not moved on, I need to know that you are technologically savvy enough to be able to use Google. And I absolutely will look at that email and hold it against you. Yes, I am prejudiced against, against Hotmail. You know, and the thing is, is that anybody in should know that people are absolutely prejudiced against Hotmail and then set up a Gmail account that forwards to your Hotmail if you're so insistent on using your Hotmail account. That's not hard to do. Yes, Hotmail used to be at the top of the line in the back of the day. I had a hot, I think I might even still have a Hotmail account, but I had several Hotmail accounts, but I stopped using them. Because I grew up. Anyway, so your, your invite has been sent to both your GameHounds email and your Hotmail account. Uh, here he is. Okay. I'm going to go get a cable. All right. Go rant. Do it. This was the only picture I had in my uh, <laughs> pictures. So it works. Okay. Uh, Hi, if, Chaos. I miss you. Uh, hi there. I'm actually not at work on Sundays anymore, so Ooh. I can do this. Yeah. Really? Um, really? Yes. Uh, really? Maybe every week, but I can join into rants way easier now. Okay. Uh, first of all, Hotmail's great. Right? <laughs> the only reason I do not transfer <laughs> to a Gmail account is because there would be so many accounts that I would have to go in and readjust and i just don't want to do that that is too much work They're okay lucky. i but i would definitely make a gmail account and then i would have that account forward to your hotmail so okay. you don't you, you need to, to you need to spend the next 20 minutes litigating the <laughs> veracity of hotmail uh, all right but no i want to hear about your rant to do with bungie okay so extraction shooters i've played a few of them now mm -hmm. uh the reason why I think a hero uh, extraction shooter is a terrible idea is because the whole idea is that it's PvEVP. So it's like you versus some bots and then like uh, you would like against other players. And you're going about and you're trying to collect loot and like you're doing stuff in the environment and PvP is incidental. And part of that PvE is the only thing that should separate you from somebody else mm -hmm. is loot. Right. <laughs> Hotmail counts are Andrew's versions of E's audio, <laughs> <laughs> <Our> audio sets. <laughs> nice. So, I, I resist! So if you have a hero like extraction shooter, one of two things happens. One, there becomes a quick meta where one is the best solo class if you're playing anyone else, there's no point. Right. And two, if you are playing solo and you're playing against a team, which often happens in these games, that's part of the asymmetry like design, you would have to contend with four sets of powers against your one. Mm -hmm. And that kind of breaks the fun of PvP. Like it's fun when you're able to kill a team or a person who is better geared than you. And then you get to take all of their stuff and leave. But you can't take their powers. Right. You can't do that. So the only thing that you get from like dying is knowing that, oh, if I was a different character, I would have won. And that breaks the psychology of it. And you are muted, Nick. You're muted, Nick. Or it's turned off. No, no I cannot hear you now. I just shook my head. <laughs> he just shook his head. <laughs> his little <laughs> mouse head. <laughs> Can't you see his little mouse head shaking? Uh, can you hear me there, now? Yes, now yes. I can hear you. Uh, now that you describe that, Rainbow Six Extraction doesn't have any PvP component. No. It's yeah. all just PvE. It is It is. So, yeah, it is co-op. It is co-op extraction. What you're saying a horde. wouldn't work. And maybe maybe that's why 
there is no PvP in Extraction because they had those same ideas. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, then you also have just Siege being the classic PvP version of like that, those characters in those games. Yeah. But yeah, right. that's 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 my argument for why a hero-based extraction shooter looter isn't good. As uh, and we're being speaking specifically on one that is PvP PvPVE. Yeah, it's just a PVE. Yeah. Co-op. Otherwise, it's and it's I do kind believe. Of good. I do believe Marathon is PvPVE. Yeah. Um. That kind of genre is defined by that. If it's just PvE, you just got a looter. Like, even if you have to extract, uh, AI can only ever be so lethal, and it borders on from either, like, too easy or I know how to beat them to these are impossible. This feels cheap. And so you put an AI that's kind of in that middle ground, Mm -hmm. but the main pull, the main tension is the PvP. Is never knowing if the person like you're gonna run into is a player, and that changes the mood immediately. Yeah, I can see that. That's part of the tension. Hmm. Uh, but yes. Also, GTA. I I kind of agree with Nick that they got lucky. I I don't think like obviously the intention wasn't to be a life service, and it was just because GTA is so good fundamentally. And they took all of their resources and put it into being a life service for the next five years. I would argue that they invented life service. No, they didn't. They, they, I don't think that when they made their shift into what they are now, that they, that, that I don't think that the, the definition of life service existed. I think that they realized how we could make money and it has since been defined as a life service. Okay, you know what? You know what? I was, my knee jerk reaction was like, no, that's absurd. They didn't invent it. And I still say that, but that makes me really curious what was like the first MMOs. game? MMOs. But, are. Yeah, well, yeah, but like I said before, all MMOs are life service games, but not all, not life, all service life service games, games are MMO. Right. What was the first game that had that distinction? That's, that's a hard one. To be I GTA. I, I don't think it was GTA. I don't think it was GTA. Because if uh, it's either GTA or it's or it's Destiny, Rogue Light or Life Service, I think is emergent. Maybe. It's an emergent category in the same way like Boomer Shooter is. Yeah, I, I don't you know think what? it was a solid line as much as like so many games have come out that were forever games that like, yeah. Uh, I, I think it's it's hard to categorize because I think it might Dota. be PUBG. Yeah, like maybe Dota or like PUBG probably started All right. this is this Apex is from Legends. Gameland.gg, an article called What We Can Learn movie. from the History of Live <laughs> Service like Games. Yeah, but it's somebody that did some work that we haven't. Uh let's see. Let's see what it's saying. Is it the first ones, first live service games were oh, yeah, MMORPGs. Hearthstone Many probably. attempts to recreate and build on the, six, okay. the success of Ultima Online would follow. 1999's EverQuest was a major success in this regard. Then World of Warcraft. Then live service games beyond WoW. To move past WoW, developers would need to forge new directions rather than recreate what had already been done. Again, this is an article written by Jared Wayne three years ago on Gameland.gg. What we can learn from the history of live service games. Nick, can you put that link up there so that we're properly and I think like MMOs. Uh, wait, which link? Oh, I'm sure it's going to go go in there. Uh, live service. Let's see. Uh, one great example of twenty of two, uh, 2014's Destiny's released uh, Destiny released famed by famed developer Bungie. The promise of loot and ever evolving evolving challenges was present in Destiny, just as it had been in WoW. But the game structure was far different, creating a new avenue for success. MOBAs such as League of Legends and Dota 2 represented other approaches to live service models with free-to-play games that turned revenues based primarily on the proliferation and popularity of aesthetic in-game goods. Developers behind these games believed that strong game play could convince players to make uh, optional financial commitments to these titles, and they were right. This 
variety of opportunities soon tempted publishers who are always looking for new ways to create revenue in the gaming marketplace. The problem is that that this may not always portend well for consumers. So they're okay. saying Destiny was really the first live service game. Oh, I mean, I, it's 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 a it's a standout. I don't think yeah. he's saying it's the live like first one. I'm, I, I want to know when it was when that term was first used. So so I found a Wikipedia article for Games as a Service because yes, that's I'm looking of, at that too. Yep, but it but doesn't have any dates associated with it. Four broad categories that I can think outside of MMO are your looter shooters. Your uh -huh. MOBAs, uh -huh. your gacha games, uh -huh. and then, uh, gosh, we just mentioned it. Oh, uh, uh, Battle Royals. Uh -huh. I, I think those are the four broad categories of live service content that exist right now. Uh, people have tried other things, but I don't think any of them have stuck in the so way that I, those have. I think, looking at this Wikipedia article, I think all those genres you mentioned they don't necessarily have to be live service. Like live service is more of a description of how something is monetized more than anything about the actual mechanics of the game. Yeah. Uh, this, this mentions uh, microtransactions, season passes, game subscriptions, game subscription services. And it feels like, uh, you know, game subscriptions, wow, existed for a long time. And those mm -hmm. are MMOs. Then you had microtransactions and those were in... You know, any game. But then the season pass is kind of the thing that started to define live service games as we think of them now, has things like Apex Legends, um, uh, Warframe, these kind of monthly events that kind of keep getting updated over and over again. And I think... Yeah, I don't see anything about that in here, but they, are, they do say that it was started out with MMOs as RuneScape, but likes RuneScape and Warcraft. And then over time, new forms of offer, offering, con offering continued, new forms of offering continued games as a service revenues have come about. A significant uh, impact on the use of gas, we'll just call it gas, games as a service, was the expansion of mobile gaming, which often included uh. a social element such as playing or competing with friends and with players who wanted to buy into gas to continue to play with friends. Chinese publisher Tencent was one of the first companies to jump into this around 2007-2008, establishing several different ways to monetize their products as a service to Chinese players who typically play on a phone or at internet cafes rather than on consoles or computers, and since has become the world's largest video game publisher in terms of revenue. Another influential game establishing games as a service was Team Fortress 2. To fight That's against a shrinking, ter a shrinking player base, Valve released the first of several free updates in 2008, the Gold Rush update, which featured new weapons and cosmetic skins that could be unlocked through in-game achievements. Further that was like updates, a proto-battle pass. Yeah, the proto-battle pass. Further updates added similar weapons, such which starting... Similar which starting... What? Start, it's, Further, it's, it's, started to include yeah. monetization options, such as buying virtual keys and open in-game loot boxes. Valve began earning enough from these revenues through to transition Team Fortress 2 to a free-to-play title. Valve carried this principle over to Counter-Stripe, Global Offensive, and to Dota 2, the latter of which was in competition with, for League of, with League of Legends by Riot Games. League of Legends, which had already had a microtransaction model in place, established a constant push of new content on a more frequent basis, in this case the release of a new hero each week for several years straight, to compete, creating the concept of, a li of lifestyle games such as Destiny and Tom Clancy's The Division. Okay, so yeah, that's it's like a that's combination not that's of, a pretty that's a pretty good explanation, and I'm not going to disagree with any of that. that no, it's, actually, yeah, it's a that's... it's a combination of Tencent and Valve, and then League of Legends and Dota kind of being the first games to popularize that that weekly release cadence. Right, right, and that was an and it was a matter of competing with each other. Yeah, Dota and, and League of Legends competing with and each then, other, and then other games are just like, hey, let's try to do that. Yeah, yeah. So really, huh. it was it was it was Valve and Tencent that fucked it all over. Yeah, it was it was fuck fuck, fucking game, game, <laughs> fucking fucking game. game. Uh, I think a live service, <laughs> a, a rough description of it then would just be any game that's released with the intention of being either evergreen or with oh, a yeah. long like um, shelf life. 
cool. I yeah. I remember there was a uh, survey that went out, and I saw this news story. I didn't think to mention it because it's like very minor. This survey went out to like a whole bunch of game developers, and it came back as like, oh yeah, ninety five percent of them are working on live service games, and that feels like a huge number. But then it basically described live service as a uh, any game with content released after the game is released. Yeah, that's that's not a live service. <laughs> and then like not even close. You think of how the natural like evolution of game design and monetization has gone. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, the first live service game was Oblivion. Horse armor. <laughs> like not that not started wrong. it. Not wrong. It, it was DLC. Then they were like, okay, we want to make more money. Okay, microtransactions and stuff that you can buy in game between DLC packs. And mm. then you just keep going until you reach where we're at now where you're paying forty dollars for a skin on league. But you know what? You could also pay a dollar for some port crystals in Dragon's Dogma 2. Just to mm. take us all the way back to those oblivion days. You're wrong for that, Nick, by the way. You're wrong. <laughs> and, and I want to point out, like I was saying earlier, all of that stuff that you can buy in uh Dragon's Dogma is in game. Oh, yes. Yeah, it absolutely is in-game. It's just that it's hard to get in-game. It's, it's not even hard to get. Like, some of the port crystals you get really early on. Oh, really? Just, I haven't I haven't found yeah. one yet. Um, Well, relatively early, I guess. You can just buy one, obviously. But I think there's yeah. ten. Ten? Yeah, like, you can have up to ten, like, wait. Oh, yeah, yeah, nice. in, in the game. I, I found a place where I can use special collectibles I found in the world to buy port crystals. Yeah. And so at uh, that point, I could buy like six of them myself, but I don't have the fairy stone to make it matter. So it's like, well, I'm just going to hold on to these. And as to the question of like MMOs and life service, I don't think there's a meaningful dis- like difference other than MMOs being massive. Uh, there's a reason why Destiny, Warframe, all of them are called MMO lights. It is mm-hmm. because it is a smaller scale version generally not depicted as having like a persistent open world yeah i i do think i do think there's a distinction because i think an mmo is largely defined by like having an open world right this big huge world to explore but a live service game doesn't necessarily need that like fortnite doesn't have that fortnite or apex legends doesn't it's a structure more than a like that's that's why this is so hard because mmo is a gaming structure Life service is a financial structure. Right, exactly. exactly. You're you're competing. It's uh, apples and oranges, really. Yeah, but yeah, that's, that's the end of my rants and my right. like. And that was an interesting dollars. thought experiment of <laughs> oh, what yeah. is life service and when did it start? Yeah, but I'll leave you guys to the rest of your podcast. Sure, you don't want to stick around. I, I am not prepared for anything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you, do you think never, he is? never stops us? <laughs> <laughs> certainly never stops nick oh absolutely not <laughs> maybe next time maybe all next right. time all right all okay right. you're always one. welcome all right talk to you later bye. bye all right so um uh well to continue to continue to, to continue on the the shit train uh-huh. uh things were not looking good at bungie things are also not looking really good at kotaku yeah uh apparently their editor in chief basically resigned this week uh, and had like a Twitter rundown of why. And then a bunch of other Kotaku writers were basically like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to talk talk about this. Yeah. And uh, basically what they're saying is that um, Geo Media wants Kotaku to basically shift from news to guides. Um, And if you go to the front page of Kotaku right now, you'll see what they mean. Because when they say guides with Kotaku, they're not really talking about uh, full walkthroughs. What they're talking about is uh, essential tips of the week. Nine things to know before starting Rise of the Ronin. Clickbait. Yeah, 18 things to know before starting Dragon's Dogma 2. How to unlock Dragon Dogma 2's hidden true ending. And you see on the right side that game tips and guides, that used to be the latest news that used to be the biggest news stories right but now that's changed to guides because that gets more traffic um and what's what's interesting is uh the people at remap uh, who used to be waypoint who used mm-hmm. to work for vice they've been in like the media landscape for a while 
they've had uh, let's say a really big article written for either them or Waypoint, I forget whose, that's about the rise of guide writing and about how guides writing is kind of the new major form of, uh, it's what keeps the lights on at any of these big news sites. Like guides writing is kind of what generates a vast majority of all the traffic to any of these websites. Really? I did not realize that. Yeah. Like guides writing is the thing that keeps IGN afloat. And that sort of makes sense because if you look at YouTube, that's a lot of YouTube when when it comes to like, if you ever go under like the tab for you gaming tab on YouTube, it's almost all guides like that. Yeah. Like, well, and, and think about just like, I'll be playing something and it's like, oh, you know what? Wait, in Dragon's Dogma, how do I get a, um, how do I get a port crystal? And so I'll type in Dragon's Dogma port crystal and it comes back with, various articles of how do you get a port crystal like mm -hmm. the exact thing because they know that uh that's what the google search engines will uh uh float to the surface so have you talked about sweet baby ink we haven't talked about that but i don't think that has anything to do with why this is happening at kotaku no i think you just want to know in general Oh, no, we we haven't talked about it because it's stupid and I don't want to I don't want to talk about right wing assholes trying to recreate Gamergate in a even more sad and embarrassing way. Yeah. Um yeah, and I'm uh, man that it it bothers me at the same time that I've just it does a bit. I don't This is this is kind does. of dare I say this is the problem with a world that is driven on internet SEO. algorithms. Yeah. Is that we're just going to get a bunch of sites that are all exactly the same. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be, it's all, it all is going to come down to the lowest common denominator. And that's sad for me. Is it Kotaku's not going to look any different than game facts that's not going <laughs> 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 That was funny. <laughs> Yes, chaos. It's, it's good to Are be on you the show sure? Again. You, sure, you don't want to just stay on? <laughs> I was gonna go do something, but like, yeah, okay. but the sweet baby ink stuff, right? I, yeah. I don't want to get into like too much of that. But there was a group that was created that goes through and like uh, basically finds any game that they work on and they put it on a list and it's on Steam as a group. Yeah. So a writer at Kotaku made an editorial piece where they infiltrated the discourse and I'm I'm quoting here you guys can't see my fingers but they're totally doing the quote thing yes exactly thank you uh and she wrote a whole article about how she joined the discord group for this and went off about it yeah and like that, that's that's what kind of created the the news cycle uh, uh a bit like that was in relation, like that was in response to the new cycle starting with Game Okay, Game. okay, because that's where the, I first that's where I first read about it, it had thing. been happening beforehand. That had so much backlash from like the type of people who you don't want to be mentioning, like that that is what caused Kotaku to break off of politics completely with gaming. Like that really? article is probably the catalyst for them being done with all of that. Because, hey. like, that wasn't that long ago. No, I know. That's and, why. And, like, to say, oh, they broke off from politics, but at the same time, there hasn't really been a big political thing to report on since then. Well, this... I, I wouldn't even say this is necessarily political, in my opinion, but this article was seen as such a political art article that, like, it is the primary reason that they stopped doing that kind of content. I mean, they just I don't could, want to fuck with this anymore. I could, I could see Geo Media, who has traditionally ruined every website that it's been involved with. Uh, <laughs> it, like I've been, I've been surprised that Kotaku has lasted this long, considering yeah, what have, Geo sure. has done to uh, other websites in that same umbrella. Agreed. Right. Apparently, like Kotaku is like a joke in these kind of circles nowadays. I, I don't what, know. I like, don't the, much. like the right wing. So no, their their writing in general, like their journalism, is considered pretty much a joke. Like, I don't think so. I think Kotaku is like, 
there's a lot of good writers there, but I do know that it's become the target of right wing mockery because of its, you know, liberal slant and you know yeah. pro LGBT everything that they do. Um, and so that's you know, there's like a Reddit that's like, oh, Kotaku in action. That's all about, uh, um, like people pointing out and going, oh yeah, this is woke. Oh yeah, that's woke. The anti woke, uh, uh, right? Yeah, I've I've seen yeah. more of it than I would care to ingest. I, but <laughs> yeah, no, ditto. I, I I find myself like, what is what is it with these people? And like, kind of going down that rabbit hole and just being like, this is insane. The, um, but but it's insane. But they're also like they have nothing better to do, and no, that's what wrong. that's what gives them the kind of internet powers that they can they can spend all the time harassing writers because okay. they have nothing better to do. This is also my opinion. Like the reason games have been sucking, in my opinion, is just the drive to monetize them. I think being as cookie cutter and generic as possible. The the, the uh, when dare I call it the Me Too movement? I want that game too. Me too. Me too. It's a whole different uh, kind of Me Too movement of just the, like the drive... everybody making a Me Too game for the, the... games or articles. Games, the games like they're okay. they're designed to be monetized heavily. They're designed to sell to the most people possible. And whatever so, made whatever made the la a huge amount of money last month is what we're working on now. And it's just frankly, most people tend to slant liberal like. Not necessarily gamers, any particular group, but just most people, I'd say, care about that stuff. So it's popular, and that's what they're trying to sell. Oh, yeah. I think, well, it's, I think it's that... also the fact that if, if, like, the whole issue with Sony and Spider Man is that it broke sales records and still barely broke even. If yeah. you're hitting that level, you need to appeal to as many people as possible, which means you need to appeal to as many different demographics as possible, which means that, like, the whole anti-woke crowd is in complete financial opposite to what every major gaming company wants to do. Right. But instead of them having, like, the self-awareness to look at that and go, oh, the issue isn't that they're going woke. It's that they want money at all costs, and they're spending so much money on that that you end up with a bad game and how games have been kind of progressively getting worse. They see it as just the cultural nonsense to them. Mm. And I think that's, I mean, that's obviously wrong. Like mm. if you took out all the woke stuff, you'd still have games that would just be trying to make as much money off of you as possible. And they would still suck. Yeah, like, you'd still have, you still have, um, still have a horse not, armor. not, not sea of thieves. What's Ubisoft's sailing game? Skull and bones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like Skull and Bones, I, I don't even know if it has a political slant outside of pirates. Like it doesn't. That's pirates like, that's good. Thing. That's it. Pirates good. I, I saw people mention Suicide Squad with the sweet baby thing and all the examples thereof. And like, oh look, they look at how much uh uh the wokeness of it ruined, ruined rock that's steady. Not why though? Yeah. But, but like exactly. no, because you just you just look over here at Skull and Bones, which does everything that those people say they wanted. And it still sucks. Well, yeah. I played Suicide Squad start to finish. I've beaten that game. Oh, yeah? Yeah. The things that ruin that game, that make it bad, are repetitive missions. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah. It, it has nothing to do with the politics. And, like, yeah. some no, of that I... stuff is, like, there. Like, but that has nothing to do with what made the game horrible. Yeah. I'm saying even if you took those people at their word... If you just look over at this other game as an example, you can see it. Oh, yeah. Like, if you like, it, it's like, no, you can see the game that you say you wanted, and it's still not very good. But the fact, like, going back to the article itself and the reason I hopped in, the reason I say that that article had a lot to do with why they killed, like, the political arm of their reporting is because that was your first, taking you as an example, that was your mm -hmm. first introduction to it. I had been hearing about it for weeks before that. Like that article hit the mainstream and pushed a lot of people to hate on Kotaku. Like that got the most eyes on this situation and they did huh. not want those eyes. Yeah. It basically shed light where they didn't want the light to be shed and has a result. Uh, there's back it like, the culture, the political backlash for that. Yeah, but article. but backlash from you know you know, um, you know what that's called. 
Um, That's called terrorism. Yeah, it's it's backlash from. It's not like pro backlash. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's reactionary. It's, yeah, reactionary. It's not. It's not good faith backlash. Oh no. Yeah. It's more like, oh, you told people we're doing something stupid. Now I'm we're gonna, gonna make gonna, you like, pay. Yeah. I'm gonna destroy you. Yeah. It's called terrorism. And it's and unfortunately, like I said before, I can totally see Geo Media succumbing to that because. It's a lot. Money. It's a lot cheaper and easier to sick to 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 um, you know capitulate to people that are trying to strong yeah. arm and bully and terrorize. This you. was this was the Always company been. that fired everyone at Deadspin. This was the company that like gutted Gizmodo. Um, yeah, I'm really surprised that Kotaku lasted as long as it did under <laughs> Geo. Uh, but no, like obviously, I. I the sweet baby ink thing has blown up way larger than I think is reasonable. What's what's kind of sucks for them is that they uh, they do not they clearly didn't understand the dry sand effect. Is that probably most people didn't even know or care about sweet baby ink until this article came out, and then they reacted to this article, and now everybody knows about sweet baby ink. Yeah, because I mean, but, but, millions and of- their Discord. And their Discord. They yeah. absolutely are aware. They should have just kept their mouths shut and it would have blown over. Well, okay. But no, they full, had a dry sand effect themselves. Full reference. Full reference. Sweet Baby is not the villain here. No, no, no. I'm talking about the Discord itself. The, the okay, Discord okay, okay. itself. By the Discord itself retaliating against Kotaku and by Kotaku capitulating and this move, now everybody, now you and I are having this conversation about the Sweet Baby Ink Detection Discord channel that up until that moment, none of us had any clue about. Yeah. And we talk about it in a spray sound effect. And we talk about it in a mocking fashion specifically. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Like, I'm not sure of the culture at Sweet Baby Ink. Like, I think there's been so many assertions put to them that are completely unwarranted. And I, I think there is value of having a consulting company if you were trying to step out of like your cultural norms for writing, where you have oh, somebody yeah. that you can call up and be like, hey, these are not like we want to put these characters in, but we don't know how to write them or we want to write them in good faith. So having right. that as an option is good. Right. Um I will say that I think any company that is making a game that like they have a setting like they're setting up their development for it and then they contract out writers to write actual massive chunks of it Mm -hmm. i I worry about the longevity of that game just because it doesn't seem like they're making that game as a piece of art and simply as a monetization vehicle oh yeah anything that contracts writers it's like uh clearly you you made the level and now you need someone to justify why that level's in there yeah um and i don't if there's any argument to be made that would be my biggest one and that one falls in the company not sweet baby ink like yeah yeah i think the 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 purest example of like how this group so missed the mug um was one of them i forget who they were talking to maybe it was for the kotaku article but they were like oh yeah i I was playing God of War, you know, God of War Ragnarok. And in that game, Kratos decided not to kill Zeus because he's like, we must be better. Oh, he decided not to kill Thor because we must be better. Spoilers and thanks. Yeah, it's been a while. (laughs) Um, And this guy was like, Kratos would never do that. Like, Kratos is a god killer. He would never, like, let someone live and say, we need to do better. This must be, like, woke messaging. But the thing is, but the thing is, if you played those games, it's literally the entire time point, <laughs> the entire message from beginning to end is Kratos reckoning with the fact of what he used to be. It's like, how do you spend 50 hours in a story and miss the basic premise of it? God of War 3 ends where literally you're fighting in a dreamscape and you have to hug your family to heal yourself. Like... Yeah. That's that's the classic games. That's how that series ends. Like his whole point was family. And yeah. now he has a kid and like he he doesn't want to perpetuate those cycles again that he did before. Mm-hmm. Like, also, they added a character who was not white in Norse mythology and they 
Oh, yes. Yeah, how, do, how dare they do that? Oh, <laughs> these non-human gods. How dare they have a different skin tone? <laughs> oh, I hate it. I hate it. This gives me so much rain. Man, I'm, I'm very... Yeah. I, I, I'm not going to go there, but, you know, there are some very famous books that everybody wants to depict the uh, protagonist as white that were written in is in you know like mesopotamia and israel and the good times you know that person probably wasn't white but you know uh, some great some example books, of this like the like the most published book in the history of the world possibly <laughs> yeah you know what he wasn't white he really really wasn't white he, uh, he couldn't have been white <laughs> an example of i think like the point of it not actually mattering is um and one i think did really well did you guys ever watch the disney plus uh percy jackson series that came out no. i didn't but i heard good things about it yeah, yeah no i think it's doing uh, having read the books and watching it, it's great however one of the main trio of characters the the girl in the books was white and the actress playing it she is a person of color uh and he got a lot of hate for that and everyone was like Disney plus change in people and Rick Rodan, the author came out and was like, listen, you little fuck faces. <laughs> I was there for the entire casting and she is perfect for this role. And if the only reason you're not going to watch it is because her race was changed without even seeing this girl act who I have personally chosen to play this character, that's what's called being racist. You little bitches. I'm I'm paraphrasing, <laughs> but like he, he was just no shit given. He was just like, yeah. this is the and, and that's good actor to, to play, and that's good to see. Yeah, and you know what? The quality is not dimmed from it. Like, it is a great show. So, like, obviously, fucking wrong. All right, shit, stupid. <laughs> oh yes, yes, in very very many ways. So, uh, you stick around now, or are you just gonna I, like? I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I can hop out, <laughs> hide, like sit in the like behind the studio, ready in case the next thing. I, you guys I mean, my my, my next hang up. I don't think you're gonna come back. <laughs> my next story is about VR. Sure, I'll stick around. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, there's been a lot of words that I've wanted to say over the like two years I haven't been here. So yeah, I know we missed you too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So your VR story. Okay, next story. Uh, Sony is reportedly pausing the production of PSVR 2 in order to clear inventory that hasn't sold through. They basically, they made a bunch, they sold some, and now they're like, okay, we need to like make less. Yeah, so we that need to we get sell rid of what's through. on the shelves before we start making some more. Yeah. <laughs> they just need to drop that price just a little bit more. That, that would help. A little bit more. That would help. Because, like, look, it would just take a little bit. Look, it's a really good VR headset. I know, it's and it's really the only cool. VR headset that's worth getting anything now, especially since they're talking about actually expanding its use for something other than PlayStation. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, freaking lootly. I, I know that that's the headset I'm going to get. I just needed to be able to I did see, and I don't, I think it was Sony. Maybe Sony said something that like, oh yeah, they're, oh God, I don't remember if it was official, if it was a leak, but like they're looking into making it compatible with PCs. Right, yeah, that's what I mean, is if they're okay, looking yeah, into yeah. making it compatible with PCs, and I said at that time, then if they do that, then it is game over. They have won the headset, the, the VR headset war, because I can't... I don't know, I heard a lot of good things about Oculus 3. Okay, can I play an Oculus 3 on my consoles? No. Exactly, right there. That's how they win. Is that if I can play, I buy one headset and I can play it with my console and with my computer, I am willing to like give up, even if it's not as good a headset as Oculus. The fact that I only have to buy one headset right there makes it worth my while. They will win the headset war, period. To, to be fair, the MetaQuest 3 is apparently stellar. And I'm sure can, it is. Can, can you play it on my PlayStation? Uh, not your PlayStation, but your PC. Yeah, I can play, play PC and all the game, all the typical games that you would, right. all the same VR games you could play on PSVR. You could play on your PC with an Oculus. Here's the problem, and it's it's a, but I don't. <laughs> it's a problem with Sony, and it's the same problem they did by buying Bungie. They thought of short term plans without long term. Mm. I I said I said years ago that 
I when I bought the headset, like this, this is a really good device, and I'm really glad it exists. It is a terrible financial decision on Sony's part, but I'm so glad that they made that mistake because it worked out well for me. Because mm -hmm. I've heard that it's genuinely amazing. OLED screen, yeah. really good really like cool. solution. Uh, but there's no games for it. Like I, I, nothing... I do kind of disagree with that, just because the thing is, there's no exclusive games. You know, it's all the all the same games you get like on PC. You got on the PlayStation, but there's no major exclusive ones. Well, and then on um, like into that, the exclusive studios that were making VR titles have been shuttered. Like, <laughs> yeah. A lot of them have been shut down. Yeah, that's so right. When like... Sony fired everyone, right? They. <laughs> Which is another reason why it's a good idea to make it compatible with uh, PCs is because now they they don't have any more games coming out for VR. So the only way to sell their VR headset is to make it compatible with everybody else who's making VR games and but not in-house stuff. But the problem is the MetaQuest 3 does have exclusives, really good exclusives, like that almost make them worth getting over. Yeah, I've heard they about have... the uh, Asgard's Wrath. Yeah, Asgard's Wrath is a 60-hour story-driven campaign in VR. Uh -huh. It is, like, one of a kind. It has the Resident Evil games, like, as the full VR experiences. Resident PSVR Evil 4. has that, too. PSVR has Re Resident Evil 4 VR? I thought it did, yeah. I thought that was meta-exclusive. Oh, the yeah. old one was definitely meta-exclusive. I know, wait, I know 8 was, 8 had a, no, not 8. Seven? Seven and Village. Seven, Which, okay. Yeah, Seven Village had PSVR. Was new for an Oculus. Okay. Uh, e. MetaQuest uh, 3 yep. also has the Lego game. Resident Evil 4 VR mode. Bro, become Leon S. Le Le Leon S. Kennedy and see the nightmare through his eyes. The enter the secluded European built village brought to life in the power of PlayStation VR 2. An immersive okay. blah, blah, blah. Fair yeah, enough. okay. I, I, I say that because I've been planning on playing that game in VR whenever I get like you a should, month game. a month like that doesn't have any other like huge ass fantasy RPG coming out. In other words, never. Actually, like the next couple months are dry. There's no big releases for well, the next couple the months. Well, the next couple months uh, have Dragon's Dogma and then Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and then Baldur's Gate 3 and then, you know, Shadow of the Earth Tree somewhere in there. So it's... Yeah, uh, I'm not saying, like, there isn't good stuff now, but we've kind of hit the end of, like, the great stuff. I, I kind of hope so. I kind of want to be in a drought of games. That, that being said, like, I just think the PlayStation VR 2 was a terrible decision by Sony. Like, they needed to either commit all in with it and have, like, several exclusives for it or just not have made it oh well, like it it really should have just been compatible with the pc from the beginning that would have been amazing a 300 dollars vr headset that's oled and like has the quality of life stuff playstation has yeah. is solid although it's not 300 it's like 600 it's 600 dollars what it's, it's 550 base and then 600 if you got the call of the mountain bundle okay but it's, it's 550 that's, that's unfortunately i think too much for it because the meta quest 3 has like it's 500 it's wireless it has amazing pass through for augmented reality stuff yeah that's the thing is i i do think the meta quest 3 is like the better headset um but the, like the vr when it came out it was the best there was uh and so if it had PC compatibility at that point, I think you would have had a lot, a lot of people buying it a lot faster. That would have been cool. Yeah, I think you would have had more people picking it up. Uh, I'm waiting for the Index 2, personally. You know, when my grandkids can play that. The Is Valve still doing that? Yes, there are stuff in the works for a second VR headset. Oh. Uh, we will see if that ever comes out. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll never see a third one. Oh, just, uh, no, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we might see a fourth one. I'm also waiting for the Steam Deck 2. It's unrelated. The Steam Deck is amazing. I've heard it's cool. Wait, Edie, didn't you buy one? Don't you have one? Have you ever used it? No, really. I, I don't even know where it is right now. Can I have it? <laughs> if, no. if, 
if I come over to your house and I find it, it will be like an Easter egg hunt hey, and I get to can, keep it. <laughs> if he plays Evolve with us, can he have it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, you cannot have my Steam Deck. Uh, it's in my house somewhere. It, it is a fun little handheld. Probably over there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> you got to know what you can play on it. But once you do, it's pretty great. Yeah, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. I've never really found anything on there that I really, really, really wanted to play. And to be honest, if I want to play it, I'm going to be playing it at home. There's never a time I'm away from my house that I have the op option to be able to play something. Like my commute is too short. It's a 20 minute commute. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'll just yeah. I'll just come over. You don't know where I live, bitch. Take that ball. Yeah, I've been to your house. Uh, you've never been to my house. I have. I haven't been in it, but I've been outside it. Oh, maybe. Oh, that's right. On the you've sidewalk been yeah, at night, yeah. looking in. <laughs> no, yeah. I, I, I was there outside briefly for one moment. Yes. Although, honestly, if you asked me where it was, I could not take you there. Exactly. I'm sure if but we I, work together, I Nick, can find you can it. find it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh no no you cannot have my, my ps fair but uh it ultimately came down to the fact that i if my life was slightly different actually you know where i'd probably use it if i started going up to the sacramento office on a, more frequently because it's like a two-hour train trip mm, yeah you'd want um to but inevitably i'm in front of my computer anyway and i'm working so if i'm like have any spare time and i have my computer with me i'm working Kind of the nature of me is I work like rabidly yeah. work whenever That's I have an option. Uh, like AC Wraith is saying, like you're saying, if you're at home and you have a computer or something that you'd rather be playing on, right. you will. Right. Yeah. You need to know if you can use a handheld. Yeah. Like, like the, the truth is, Edie, I don't know if I would use it any more than you do. I just would have it. it. I just want to have what it. I did. That's I, what I did. That's what I did. <laughs> I so just want to have like, it in my closet instead of your closet. Right, Nick, just 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 think of it that I have your. Uh, oh yeah, I I. But got I'm just one. holding it for you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You got one, but it's here. Okay. Yeah, I lent it to you. you yeah. Anyways. Okay. Because I, I never used for you. it. I never used it. That's Derailing actually really good. <laughs> anyway, PlayStation VR. Yeah, I just think it was a poor investment from Sony. <laughs> Uh, You'll need crystals and fairy stones to get my, to my house. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yes, it was a poor investment. Such a nice piece of hardware, too, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I still enjoy it. I should do another VR stream at some point. Yeah, you should. It's always, that's always fun. Yeah. And I appreciate you doing that for a whole month while I was gone. Mm -hmm. um, so, no. oh, good. I was just going to mention there's a. Uh... <sighs> pointless to bring it up if I can't remember it. There's a VR company that you can pay $1,500 to get, uh, you take an iPhone and you scan your face, and they'll make a VR headset that has, like, oh, your, like, like, just specifically for you. Oh, and they're God. about the size of a little larger than goggles. Oh, um, God. Interesting. That's a little much. But, like, they are so small and cool, and it's almost worth That's it. That's what you need for VR. That's yeah, what no. I mean. literally hmm. just like goggles, like on your face, like that big, and they're they play like high refresh rate PC VR games. Mm -hmm. And I, I forget what they call. It. I will look those up and I'll get back to you. But if you want to continue now, I wanted to bring that up in case someone's looking to throw away a ton of money. Yeah, no, I I try to not to encourage people to waste money like that. I mean, is, it, is it big screen or beyond? Yeah, the Beyond, I believe. Big screen Beyond. I wish you could show a picture of them because they're genuinely. Oh, you can. Yeah, preset share. So normally, when you think of the VR, you think of like the PlayStation and the MetaQuest. Then you have these, which are like not very large. No, yeah, look at that. And it, it's custom fit for you. Oh, wow. Those are kind of nice. Yeah. If you're into VR, like, that's pretty great. Yeah. 
I'm not that into VR. Not a thousand dollars into VR. Fifteen hundred. <laughs> God. But yeah. I mean, you know what? I just need to like win a lottery. What's one kidney. Oh yeah, or lottery. That's True. There is the, there is a lottery <laughs> option. <laughs> I mean, I like how you went right there, you know. Chaos. It just went straight for the kidneys. Right, right, right. Uh, let's see if this, uh, this, uh, there's, there it is in the, in the, the trailer for it. Uh, I bring this up because, like, getting a PlayStation VR for six hundred dollars when you have genuinely interesting stuff on the horizon for VR, mm -hmm. uh, I don't see a like world in which Sony hasn't committed a ton of money to VR exclusives that it's not going to die. Mm -hmm. I, well, yeah, I don't think we'll see many more. Like, I think it's still a good purchase now because like, if you have a PS five, it's still a good headset. If you're, if you don't have a PC for like the, the Oculus. Um, but yeah, if, if more headsets continue to come out, then it will be eclipsed just like any other console. And at that point, it's like, well, why would I get a, you know, Xbox 360 when the Xbox Series X is out? Look how small they are. They look so comfortable. And the the one thing that would be interesting to me as someone who is very, 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 very blind is that because it would be custom made, they would probably have custom made diopters to it. So I wouldn't have to worry about glasses. Yes, you can actually send your prescription mm. in and they'll put those lenses in for yep. you. Oh, shit. That's yeah, that's no, this is diopters. as custom as you can get. Yeah. Yeah, that the would be the first is, customization. Everything else is like secondary because they have that kind of customization for like like diving masks that are very expensive, but you can do that with diving masks. How as much well. are these? These are only a thousand dollars. Maybe gotten cheaper. Or twenty or thirty-two dollars yeah. a month for thirty-six months. It's only a thousand dollars. Like honestly, it's not that big of a jump. I, like that's my point. And like the only problem with this is you can't share it. For obvious reasons. Right, right. I mean, I'm not sharing that headset anyways. No right. one else wants to play <laughs> VR. But again, it still has that same OLED technology. The lenses are really good. Like uh, $400 more and you get something that's custom fit, way lighter. Yeah. Okay, what I need to know is what is this compatible with? A PC. I'm not sure if it can be. Okay, a, but, like, but like... um. Steam VR stores, Oculus VR stores, like... Uh, I, I imagine Steam or anything that you can get online. Uh, I'm not sure if you could get Oculus games for it. Okay. Yeah, this is... Okay, this is something I'm going to have to, like, keep an eye on. Oh, that's a bad sign. What? You go to their store and it's broken. Oh, not me. I went there and... Just because you're trying to stream? I don't know. No. I have stream beyond. I see prescription lens inserts, audio strap... They've got a bunch of t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they've got a t-shirt that's like a, a hardware breakdown of all the uh, all the pieces of it that actually looks pretty cool. Apparently they don't they don't like me. It doesn't like me. And this is why our, the podcast is three hours for my mom. <laughs> they, <laughs> uh, they have a big screen beyond storage can that looks like a soda can. That's funny. But I guess that's like how you store it. Yeah, the official storage can. It's just, it's just a, it's like a um, one of those oversized uh, energy drink cans. Yeah. But I, I see stuff like this, and it does make the PlayStation VR seem like. Yes, an that, that is. It's getting investment. eclipsed, right? At this point, the P, the PS. Oh, you have to pay more. You have to pay is a, like another another ninety bucks for the diopters. Yeah, but if you're paying a thousand, what's another ninety? Yeah, but it's a, it's what's called, um, you know, essentially you know, taking advantage of people for their disability is what they're doing. But you no. can't do that for like PlayStation. Like you just have to try to struggle with classes. No, yeah. but you have to buy the diopters. So it'd be the same thing for them. You can just mm -hmm. exactly. That I'm not spending a thousand dollars for a, a a customized <laughs> headset. It's a customized headset, except you can't see through it. Because they won't customize it so you can actually see it. <laughs> They're essentially only making it for able-eyed people. No, they... Look, the fact that they have those lenses 
makes them more accessible. Right. I, I am so I am so different. incredibly used to the the blind person. Um, uh, what do they call it? The uh, penalty for being a blind person. For, blind person tax. Yeah, blind person tax. It's kind of like being the the pink tax. It's also the glasses tax for everything. It, aside, like, yeah, back to the topic of PlayStation VR. It ain't doing well. It it in a rough spot. <laughs> Yeah, in a rough spot, but as as long as uh, VR games keep coming out on the console, I will be happy. If they had made like Last of Us VR, uh, they made a Horizon mm. VR. Well, they did do that. Spider Man VR. If you want to vomit. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Are we like to call it <laughs> the Pukeplex? <laughs> <laughs> but like leverage more of their exclusives. But to be fair, PlayStation Five in general hasn't leveraged exclusives very well this yeah, generation. But they haven't had many exclusives. Yeah. Which, uh, okay, at the risk of derailing this even further, I do think please, it's a little. Please, please feel feel free. Feel free. I do free. think it's a little ironic that at this point in time, uh, PlayStation and Sony are being accused of like you don't have enough like console exclusive. You don't have enough PS Five exclusive games when. Let's flash back four years to the beginning of the pandemic, and PlayStation Five comes out, and no one can get a console because of the pandemic, and right. everyone is like, "Yo, this should be like cross gen. Like, hey, why is there? You should be a. Why is there no free like upgrade? Oh, this this should come out on PS4. Why is Horizon for Ben West not coming out on PS4? I can't get a PS5. You need to make this for PS4, and so they did, and then through through through. Four years later, everyone's like, "Yeah, no, there's no PS5 exclusives. This is bullshit." Yeah, what's the problem with you? You Don't have enough exclusives. It's it's a little. What do you want from us? Damned if you don't. It's Um, true that the PlayStation Four has had a longer cycle into the. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, there were also like a lot more games for PS4 and like newer franchises uh, to be fair like this could come back to the pandemic like that fucked so much stuff up yeah and so, like hey, and like yeah. just, i have a question for you yeah do you want a turkey uh, <laughs> no you sure i'm good yeah i'm good do you need a fridge uh <laughs> no do you need a she'll fridge sh- and a turkey <laughs> she'll ship you a fridge how to pop a machine she will personally deliver you a fridge. I Turkish forgot coffee? About the popcorn. Do you like Turkish coffee? I know. I hate coffee. It's gross. Well, you know what? You, wait, you, do you want a, do you want a slurpee you... machine? By the way, I also get a slurpee machine. Do you want a slurpee machine? Oh, my God. Why do you have all of these things? This doesn't end. Every hour Mistakes you're like... were made. Every hour you're like, oh, by the way, I actually bought more. Yeah. I bought a, it's an industrial. You have like a Sky so, so, catalog? Okay, wait. When... Let's... Sort let's of. Take, let's take a bit stock. like that. You started going in with the intention of getting espresso machine and a table. Mm-hmm. You came out with espresso machine, table, two, three, four, five fridges, uh, popcorn what? machine, two, 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 two drink display cabinets, two drink display. Uh, no, no, that's, I, I showed you those. Oh, those, those, oh, those like, are, okay. Those right. are part of the fridges. Right, okay. Right. Um. So you, those you aren't part of the fridge. There were five fridges and two, two, so seven oh, of those. Yes, oh, it was five fridges, two drink display cabinets. So it's ten things, and then you had the three Turkish coffee makers, makers. Mm-hmm. and then the popcorn machine. He so you went slurp- and, and, the and then the machine. slurpy machine. You so you, you want to get two things, <laughs> and you came out really, with really four things because I was, I was, 15. I did want want the dis- drink display contain things. Okay, so four to fifteen. Yes. Oh, that doesn't include the 15 turkey. So really 30. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? No, but okay. To be, fair, to be fair, you didn't pay for the turkeys. The turkeys are free. That's true. Yeah, the turkeys came with the <laughs> Back to news, because I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. I do have one more news story. That's just like uh, kind of a fun. I, I still I haven't done a single news story. I still have news stories. Can okay. I do one? Do you want to do one? I would like to. Okay. Okay. Here's my news story. Hold on a second. I gotta find it now. Oh, well. all right. No, 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 no. Uh, GDC was this week. 
And okay. I, I really wanted to go, but it was a, a week from hell. So, you know, but I didn't go to, to GDC. But uh, there was a lot of things that happening. And one of the stories was, uh, the, the nice thing about GDC is it's it's essentially developers talking to developers and kind of, you know, being more much more casual to, it, you know, like not being on and I want to say defensive about their, um, not being guarded about their communications, especially when they're in some of these talks. So there was a talk uh, that uh, was that was done by a guy named Angus Lovett, who was co-founder of Cohort, which is a mobile game revenue forecast company. He was the former VP of marketing at King, Candy Crush King. And during his talk, he had a, a, a talk titled, um, You're Wasting Money on User Acquisition. And he told a story about his days back in King, about how King wasted $3 million on hot air balloons that never could fly. So here's how it went is that King was looking to promote the release of Candy Crush Soda Saga, the follow-up to Candy Crush itself. So um, they were looking to promote it, um, and uh, they went reached out to an advertisement agency to get some ideas of how they could like announce it, like make a big splash about it. And one of the things that was brought up to them was that they could get hot air balloons with an LED screen on the side. And the, each of these hot air they, they each the, the hot air balloons were like expensive. And Love It was like, that sounds awesome. It sounds great. How much does it cost? And they're like $1.3 million each. And his answer to them, and I quote, I'll take three, thanks. So they bought three hot air balloons that were covered in LEDs so they could essentially play the trailer for Candy Crush Saga in the sky with these hot air balloons. The problem was that to have these screens required batteries. Batteries that were so heavy that <laughs> had they put them on the hot air balloon, the hot air balloon couldn't take off. So they had the I, they had 3.6 million dollars worth of hot air balloons in a warehouse that could they couldn't use they couldn't get rid of and it cost a hundred thousand dollars a year to store them and it would cost a hundred thousand dollars to destroy them i think someone just made a terrible financial decision and this mm -hmm. guy still got another job he got another job does he work at sony no, he works for <laughs> a, a game revenue forecast company. The guy that single-handedly lost King $3.6 million off of the stupidest thing that they could ever lose. He's now the vice, a, 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 a co-founder of a company that tells, that can actually forecast cast how much game companies can make. Uh, to be fair, I mean, that's like one busy day for King. They make True. That back. Uh, True. That's like that's like an hour. True. <laughs> it's not even that. Yeah, yeah. It, they they were making so much money. It was stupid. But still, the the the, the waste absolutely is mind boggling to me. I mean, I think this begs the question: Do they still have the balloons? I don't know. You had to destroy them. Like, what they, happened? They to had the to destroy them. But they were they were according to him they were parked inside of a hangar with the video screens playing ad advertisements in the why hangar. would they still be playing because they needed to keep the batteries fresh so man that that and one hangar attendant was just like man i really want to play candy crush <laughs> or he just went mad with like <laughs> I or need to stop the or soda. Or maybe, maybe they would just like have people come in and show them the balloons. I don't know what the story is, but they were they were hmm. stored. And I have no idea what the upshot of where the the balloons ended up. But it, I would imagine they probably got rid of them to the tune of a hundred thousand dollars, and they never took off. They never got off the ground. And then they sell a five dollar pack to get more money for people to make right. up for that loss. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. That's how you do it. 
There we go. Free to play summit. You're probably wasting money on user acquisition. There it is. You could actually watch it and him telling the story. And uh, my next item and my last item is, um, <sighs> well, first off, who would have fucking believed that the Barbie movie, if somebody had said to me they're making a Barbie movie two years ago, I would have been like, oh my God, what a terrible idea. Who would have believed that one, it would be a success. Two, it would have fucking Oscar. Who would have figured? Well, who would have figured that this actually might be a thing? And given its um, bona fides, it actually might be good. Margot Robbie was an executive producer of the Barbie movie. And she got really, 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 really good talent. And she made a very, very, very good movie. And now that they've had the success, Mattel has had a success of the Barbie movie, other companies, and Mattel included, are looking to make other really, really good movies about their properties. Margot Robbie is apparently looking at possibly doing, and more than just possibly, doing a Sims movie, giving it the Barbie treatment. So uh, this is according to a couple of different sources. But um, her company, Lucky Chap Entertainment, is apparently in talk with EA Maxis about the Sims franchise. Um, and that it was kind of confirmed by Jeff Schneider um, that uh, he actually dropped a tweet um, about it saying he that he's claiming that the Loki season one director, Kate Hernan, was attached to write and direct this movie. And Variety has confirmed that Schneider's exclusive uh, was true and added that Heron um, is, a, is who's Heron? Heron is who? Uh, Heron. That Kate Heron is also set to co-write and ad the adaptation with Brienne Redman, who did The Inside Man. So two more female very talented very talented female writer directors are being attached to the sims movie with margot robbie as executive producer um so those two have written in the past they did a script for a doctor who episode one of the new doctor who's and heron is also set to direct an episode of the last of us season two oh. So there's actually really pe real people attached to this, and we may very well start seeing the Sims movie come out in the near future. Here's my pitch, all right? Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen the Barbie movie yet. I want to, but I haven't gotten to it. It's uh. it's 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 really it's really. Have you seen Have you seen Godzilla? Have you seen the the, the Godzilla minus one? Oh, no, I haven't seen Go anything lately. Gotta go see both. Gotta go see both. Uh, but here's the thing. Yeah. It's a Sims movie like Barbie. Where like they're getting self awareness, but it's a horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It's actually it's a, you know what it's it's a it's a it's a movie about a serial killer because that's what happens like killing people in pools by taking out yeah that's got to be it that's got to be something in the movie about taking put pushing somebody in the pool and then taking out the uh the the, the ladder i like they, that they drown i like, like that that's the first place everyone's brain went right yeah and then, they, and then they move into into their house then they move they marry the 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 widow and then they move into the house and then murder the widow and then murder the kids I think that's a great idea because that's exactly how everybody plays the Sims. Uh, yeah, I had a friend who was trying to get a trophy where you have to marry five husbands with the same character. Yeah. So every time she would marry someone, she'd take them out size and like build a box around them. Right, you build a box around them. Right, right. And then, and then they die and then she'd go get married again. Oh, no, no, no. You you build a box around them and then you put the, uh, you, you give, you just, you don't have to do it. You let them murder themselves, which is even more fun. You give them the fireworks display and put it inside in the room with them. And then you just leave them. And eventually they'll get bored and light the fireworks and burn the room down and murder themselves. See, that's my point. Like, I'll, you don't even have to have, like, a real person. Just, like, 
let everyone who's played Sim and done these things like have a person realizing that it's happening to them so that they feel bad about it. Yep. Mm. There's always death by flies too. That's another like deep death cut. Flies. Yeah. I don't think I've seen that one. I know it's pretty rare, but you can have a death by flies if if the mm. if the sim gets too dirty. Is are their houses too filthy? They don't take care of themselves. They don't wash. If it, they may actually die death by flies. The flies essentially just overpower them and suffocate them, and they die. And then there's also the whole aliens thing and alien babies. What? I mean, there's what? Dude, Sims? Sims is wild. If you wrote out a Sims like fanfic of everything that happens to your character, it did you not know this? That you could be abducted by aliens and then no. come back and end up being pregnant by aliens and then have an alien what? baby. You didn't know this? <laughs> no. Oh well, yeah. If you if you go if you if you uh, go outside at night and you stargaze with the uh, telescope, that you could be abducted by aliens. Okay, and then the dis they disappear, <laughs> and you disappear for a couple of nights, and then they you the aliens beam you back, and then all of a sudden you realize you're pregnant. You start throwing up in the morning. Okay, we don't need Margot Robbie for this one. We need the people behind the uh, scary stories to tell in the dark movie no we need the person <laughs> because... that worked on a doc doctor who episode we definitely need someone who worked on a doctor who episode and a last of us season two episode you can also they plant can... a tree and go into like the fairy realm and come back oh, that, clean yeah. what <laughs> and it's I, like uh it's i i disease. feel like okay you could honestly be making things up and i wouldn't know the difference no, this is all true this is 100 <laughs> percent true you absolutely can do this that this is insane Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my point. Like, just putting this all in a movie where the sim has self awareness, and then like they'll be swimming or like seeing their husband swim in the pool, and then the ladder just disappears. And she's Nick, like, "Just get uh -huh. out!" Come Eighth on, Faith is also this is also true. <laughs> male sims has, still have a twenty five percent chance of having a baby. Absolutely, if a male sim is abducted, the male sim may actually be pregnant and have a baby. Huh. Let's see how to have an alien baby. Pleasant from pleasantsims.com. Wow. Yeah. Sims got death, death by flies. There you go. So whenever I watch my friend play, I'll, who will I'll play like, the character trapped in the hot tub? <laughs> exactly. Uh, whenever I watch my friend play Sims, I will narrate her story, how <laughs> I and I add flavor to it. So she was pregnant before she went into the fairy realm, and then she came back out green. And it gave birth to twins. So I told her one of her twins were evil. Now. <laughs> like that's one of just, her twins is a fairy. Like and one of them is the main protagonist of an anime. Like mm -hmm. this is just how this happens. Like the it's wild, man. You can write entire stories based off sim games. Yeah, you clearly have not watched enough. Sim there are some very, very, very funny YouTube um, channel, not channels, but like 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 playlists from some very big YouTube. Uh, content creators they had like uh, a professionally done sims like sitcom where yeah. like you had a bunch of people playing sims like living out lives and stuff huh. there was a whole tv series about it okay so like in the Call same me way Kevin that... has, a, has a series that's absolutely fucking hilarious so in the same way that the dungeons and dragons movie was basically like a campaign with your friends given the big budget treatment we need like your average sims game with Aliens and killer flies and clones. It's uh, another one. Clones, just given the big budget treatment. Yeah, you, you could be. It could be the greatest acid trip you've ever seen on screen. Like, yeah. Oh, oh, we need um. Oh, what's the guy? Gaspar Noe. Gaspar Noe. Noe. N O E. No. If you see, if you've seen any of his movies, he's the one to do this. <laughs> oh. Well, they've already we, we, as an actor or as a director. Director. But they already have the director. Now we need no. to know who's going to play. I mean, obviously Margot Robbie's going to play in it, but who else? Yeah, I can actually cool. see Margot Robbie and um, what's his name? Who played Ken? Ryan oh. Gosling. Ryan Gosling. Thank you. I like, couldn't think of the last name. I could think Ryan, but they didn't want to say it. Yeah, Ryan Gosling and Margot Robbie doing a Sims as well. Just with the big green. green oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I want to yeah. know who plays the Goth family. That would Listen. be hilarious. If it's a horror movie, just having all sorts of cameos from really high end actors who die in like horrible sim <laughs> Who would play Death? Oh my God. Death is hilarious. 
Steve Buscemi. <laughs> It'll always be that's my. A, <laughs> that's a pretty good choice. Yes, yes, Steve Buscemi is dead. <laughs> Because then you get like that. My favorite thing to do is like you know, death shows up to reap the soul, and then you just have a conversation with death, and then you could make death fall in love with you, and then you could marry death, and then you could murder death. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, and you could throw a party, and Drew Carey will show up. This is all, true. Of, of this is absolutely true. Drew Carey could show up. If you throw a raging party, <laughs> Drew Carey might show up at your party. Of all the people in the world, I would never have guessed It's Drew just Carey. a thing. It's just a thing. Absolutely. 1,000%. I am hmm. not fucking with you. Drew Carey can show up. I mean, yeah, this... Look, I guess the, the game has been out for 10 years. At a certain point, the developer just like, you know what? Fuck I haven't it. even hit the DLC. This is none of this is the DLC. This is all original vanilla game. Yeah, there's like... No, this is not vanilla game. There's some stuff we've added that's not... Maybe. I think the Drew Carey... But I think the Drew Carey thing was an update. It wasn't a vanilla. It was still vanilla, but it was an update. Like but the this very is one. base game. This is base game. Not I guess, the... Ext- I not guess it never played any... Sims 4, so I don't know what's in it. I think the latest one I played was 3. I mean, honestly, this makes sense from like a marketing standpoint because they're working on Sims 5. If this game comes out right before Sims 5 drops, mm. like they would get so many people in on that. Oh yeah, absolutely. It would it would it would be a very good idea. That'd be good time to do this. It would be, and that's, I'm sure that's exactly why they're doing it. Anyway, it's so that's that's my that's my last story. Nick, what do you got? Okay. Uh, Gog and Luna, Amazon Luna, are teaming up for cloud streaming. So that now you can use Luna really? to stream any games you have on GOG. And if you buy something from the Luna store and it's available in GOG, it will automatically be added to your account. That's a really smart idea. That seems like good really smart. Mm-hmm. Like those games are not like high fidelity games. So they're kind of perfect for streaming. Yeah, absolutely. And they're the kind of games that I wouldn't necessarily want to buy outright and own and put on a hard drive, but they're definitely something I would want to have and stream. Well, it, you still have to buy each game individually. Right, but I don't have to, like, have either, like, store it somewhere. I, yeah, 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 you wouldn't yeah. have to download it. Yeah, wouldn't have to download it. Um, yeah, I thought this was interesting. It's like the first big streaming storefront combination that we've had. Yeah, and I like the idea that it is two i don't want to say also rans but like two kind of b tier of their respective industries yeah you know it's so not valve and and it's not uh, uh it's not epic epic right so it's 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 gog and it's luna it's like they're the they're the the, the, the scrappy young guys that are trying to like prove themselves they just got enough gravitas which, that everybody knows like, what they are so it's like two great tastes that go great together like it's like isn't chocolate. that the entire point of like a functioning capitalist system is that you've got two little guys with a good idea that can team up to do something good and like they next get week, bought out. Eventually next week i will grow. tell you about the sandwich wars that are going on in my town oh there is sandwich wars happening Talk about capitalism and competition. Jeez, oh, yeah, we got two. We got two stores in town that are right across from each other that have lived copacetically for decades, and a gauntlet was thrown, and the war is on, and the 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 price of sandwiches have come screaming down. Like really? every day we come out, and it's a buck cheaper. Like it's twelve ninety nine sandwiches to ten ninety eleven ninety nine sandwiches to ten ninety nine sandwiches. Every every week they're getting cheaper because they're they're like they're fighting each other over sandwiches. Okay, I have to hear about this, but this will be next episode's next ep- pre-show. Yeah, next of his next episode, we'll tell you about the the, the sandwich wars. <laughs> anyway, so um, uh, that's all the big stuff I had. I guess the last thing that I saw this week that I just thought was kind of interesting is that, did you know Will Smith was in a zombie video game? No. Yeah, I, neither, neither did the rest of the world. 
<laughs> yeah, I saw that article and I was like, I was on the front oh, page well. of Kotaku. That was the first thing I heard about it was on the front page of Kotaku when I was looking it up about how things are going well at Kotaku. Yeah, uh, I guess according to Reuters, Reuters, they, they, Reuters, Reuters, Reuters. Uh, they put out a story about how a game called Undawn by Tencent uh, flopped oh. spectacularly. Really? I guess it had a budget of 300 developers and about $140 million. Oh, my God. And so far, after eight what months... What's the name of it? Undawn. It sounds like a fake game, to be fair. Oh, it does. <laughs> and And so far, after being released for eight months... This didn't. This isn't new. This game has been out for eight months. Oh my oh, yeah. god! That's the uh, craziest thing. I heard nothing about this uh, game. I was like, yes. oh, I wonder when this Will Smith game's coming out. Oh, it's been out for almost it's, a year. It's made three hundred thousand dollars. No. Oh my god. So a raging success. That yeah. covers so, maybe like one tenth of Will Smith's bill. Yeah, mm -hmm. but why did they not at least advertise it? I don't know because. Uh, like on Twitter, everyone's response to this story was, "I this is the first time I've heard about this game." Yeah, this, this looks like one of those like that little house sequence and settlement sequence. Just looks like one of those fake mobile games that you always see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. And I still have yet to see Will Smith. He'll probably pop up at the end. No, no he's, he's not like even... he's not even in the release. He's not I... even. <laughs> Oh, uh, where does it say his role? Like he has a pretty significant role in it. Where Let me was see if there's blah, another blah, blah. one. Okay, here's the Will Smith trailer. Apparently, there's another trailer for it. Yes, so the Will Smith trailer. Uh, so yeah, in May 2023, Smith on his YouTube channel put out a video where he said he plays the lead in the story. He's the main character. But then why would they not put him in the trailer? Is this, I'm, I'm trying to make sure that this is correct. Yeah, this is Endon. And I'm trying to figure out why they would make any trailer that didn't have Will Smith in it. It just, it, it that's such a stupid Well, okay, thing so. do makes me wonder if it was intentionally stupid. It's I, Tencent, I, right? I feel like it's, it is Tencent, yes. But so, still, Tencent's not stupid with their money. No, but Will Smith, uh, I don't think is as popular in like China. So like mm -hmm. this could be a marketing spiel for the U.S. that just never got money behind it in a way that like they did in China. Like if they were putting money towards marketing in China, because yeah, I mean, I don't know how popular Will Smith is in China compared to the U.S. I feel like this is just an example of like a complete marketing failure. Yeah. Yeah. Absolute marketing failure. The fact failure. that you have so, an actor of and that And even even level, the Will Smith trailer, they're not showing Will Smith as being a character. Yeah. It's also a mobile game. It's worth even so, they're still not showing Will Smith as being a character. Oh, is this it? Oh, there he yeah, is. There it is. There it is. I just... Yeah, I mean, it doesn't also doesn't look very good. Yeah, it's just an true, but like the fact that we didn't even hear about this, we didn't yeah. even know it existed to mock it. Pre register in June of last year. Yeah, that's insane. AC Race says it's free to, it's free to play. We could try it. <laughs> yeah, hey, new why. stream idea. <laughs> yeah, you I'm guys team up together and stream it. Yep. Mixed reviews. And there's like there's like only five thousand reviews. <laughs> Insane. I'm watching gameplay of it now. Uh yeah. this is wild to put Will Smith behind this. <laughs> and yeah. it looks terrible. Like it's a phone game. Okay, yeah, it's like a phone zombie game, right? The kind of shovel way you expect to look at and your eyes would glaze over. Mm -hmm. And it makes sense then why they would get Will Smith because he would, in theory, stop your eyes from glazing over at that and like I, make you pay attention. I would have played this like eight years ago. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what it looks eight years ago, even as a, as a mobile game. 
So yeah, essentially a waste of money. And they spent how much? 140 million. Yeah. By the looks of it, a hundred of it was to Will Smith. <laughs> but three hundred people? Yeah. Yeah. That's almost as bad as three point six million dollars worth of hot air balloons that can't take off. <laughs> That's almost as bad as that. Actually, it's possibly worse. worse. Yeah. Worse. It's on a more, magnet, on like a magnitude of 10. It's more money, yeah. but at the same time, I feel... The balloons, at least the game will play. <laughs> you can't say balloons, that about the balloon. And also, like, you could have solved the balloon issue by just asking, like, one extra question. Right. True. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> I'm watching just gameplay of this stuff now. <laughs> like, it's awful. Uh... Let's see, it says, uh, Omega Man in what seems to be to need more beta testing. Yep. Anyway, should we, like, end the show? Because, I mean, otherwise I'm just going to be sitting here doing nothing and watching stuff, and it's going to be boring as hell. Well, okay. unsurprisingly, yeah. I'm out of news items. <laughs> I, I'm also out of news items, but I want to thank you, Andrew, for coming on here and helping us cross the three-hour mark. Yeah, no problem. It's, oh, it's what fuck I'm you, for. Nick. <laughs> fuck you. Yeah, and uh, thank you for being here. And if you want to come back, you know, the door is always open. And we'll always uh, add you yeah. in whenever you, we want, you yeah. want. Happy happy to have you rant about VR and life service. Exactly. <laughs> and and what, we only won't let you in if um, we don't agree with you. I don't agree with you. Uh, that's perfectly Person, fine. Perfect. You didn't let me. That's why, I, guys, hot take or like letting you know now she kicked me off the podcast because she didn't agree with me that's why i left the first time <laughs> yeah well, you weren't you weren't doing enough guides bottom uh, yeah. line you just we needed you mm. to do more guides you were wrecking our seo up oh, hold on a second i was getting a phone call through my computer so i should no. go yeah <laughs> um all right everyone uh we might as well uh end the show so yeah. let's close this out i'm waving goodbye <laughs> You've been listening to Game Hounds, episode 307. We did record this, sorry, 709. We did record this on March 24th, 2023. I'm 2024. I'm Edie Sellers. With me is Nick DiNicola and a special guest, Creation Chaos. Yay! Please listen. Come back next week. You and everybody who's listening, we record this show live every Sunday at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern here on YouTube and on Twitch. On YouTube, we are the Game Hounds Vids. On Twitch, we are the Game Hounds. Tonight, uh, we're probably not going to stream tonight, stream tonight, but tomorrow night at 7:30 Pacific, that would be 10:30 Eastern, we will be streaming uh, Hell Divers 2. Uh, Nick and I will be playing, and maybe somebody else. So we'd love to have you uh, watch that. So that's going to be over on Twitch again. It is the Game Hounds on Twitch. So go ahead, get over there, hit the notification bell, subscribe to us, you know, follow us or whatever it takes so that you can be notified that we are going live. Another way that you can check us to make sure that we're going live is to follow our Twitter. We are Game Hounds on Twitter and you will get a notification. Uh, and I'm still going to fucking call it Twitter. It's not X. Uh, uh, we can get a notification by following us on Twitter as well. Um, we also will be notifying people through our Discord. If you ever want to join our Discord, here is, let me get the link for it, but we have a Discord that where essentially everybody, we all talk to each other. Uh, here's our Discord. Please feel free to join it. We would love to have you do that. And we are also 100% Patreon funded. If it wasn't for the patrons, we would not be able to do this as a video show. We would have been still doing it as a, pod, a podcast. Fuck you. I know what you're thinking. It's AC Ray. <laughs> fuck you. I can just shut the fuck up. I don't need to hear it. But we would be a video show. But thank God for the <laughs> Patreon. With your the Patreon support, made it so that we're we can it ignore the audio portion. So we can ignore everything in audio. So yeah, please, a buck a month is all we ask for to join our Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash GameHounds. Nick and Chaos, have a great week. AC Wraith, have a great week. Thank you to, to, to Lando Calrissian and everybody else who would join the show. Thank you so much if you did uh, say anything. Sorry if we if I forgot that you were there, uh, but uh, thank you for being there. And if you were just watching and not chiming in, please feel free to join us next week and chime in. We will absolutely talk about whatever you want to talk about. Have a great week, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow night at 7.30 for uh, Helldivers. And have a great week. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.
And we're up. All right. I got to go answer my my neighbor who is just calling me. Uh, he says, I'm going to Costco in a few minutes to put gas in the truck. Do you need anything? I need everything, but no, I'm not going to do it. I'm good. Ask him if you need those turkey. turkeys. Huh? <laughs> what? I'm not, not t- yeah, turkey. <laughs> Don't need turkey. I haven't told him I'm going to give him a turkey. I'm just going to show up at the mm. front doorstep and the deep breath of the frozen turkey. Ding like, dong ditch a turkey on his face. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to ding dong ditch a turkey to him. Um, all right. So, everybody, have a great week. And K- AC Ray, thank you again for yes. pissing me Always off. Great having you. Holding my feet to the fire because I so fucking deserve it. Um, but we'll talk to you next week. Uh, bye, everyone. Bye. bye.